Okay, I'd like to call the order the meeting of Whaley Select Board of uh, June 13th, 2018. Hello. Our first item uh, on the agenda is reorganization of the Select Board. This is an activity we do every year since uh, since elections and, and the Select Board may, may change. So, and we rotate every year the, the positions here. Uh, first, we have three positions, chairperson, vice chairperson, and clerk. I guess I'd like to nominate Jonathan Edwards as chairperson for this coming year. I second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? No. Uh, you accept? Yeah. Congratulations, John. I'd like to nominate uh, Joyce Palmer Fortune as, as vice chairperson. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Accept. I accept. Okay. I'd I'd like I'll nominate. I'll go ahead, Joyce. I'd like to nominate Fred Orlowski for clerk. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Nice. I accept. Okay. okay. Done. All right. I guess it's mine now. Um, I'm going to ask that obviously there's going to be perhaps some <coughs> high tensions in this room. Um, and I would ask that everyone be very uh, understanding of the differences of opinion and keep the discourse to a civil level um, because that's how we're going to accomplish something here. Um, before, well, let me uh, motion to approve the minutes first. Second. For May 30th. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Before we go to our 6 p.m. public hearing, are there any public comments separate from what we will have at the public hearing? No? Okay. We have a public hearing tonight to consider the transfer of an all alcohol license from Dimitrios Constantopoulos, DBA Castaways Lounge to Whateley Investments LLC to be exercised on the premises at 226 State Road in Whateley. Um, it will be followed by uh, a, a similar conversation about a license for adult entertainment, uh, but we need to treat these differently as much as they are obviously joined uh, together at some level. So I'd like to recap what was discussed last time. I know we don't have our council here yet. Um, do we know when council will be here? I was told 610, he's in traffic. Does anybody mind if we wait for council and let the board continue its other business until, tra until traffic, until council gets here so that if the board has any questions or the public has any questions for our council, they're welcome to, to ask to make those, those, those requests? Hearing no objections, we will go towards, um, I'm sorry? Those All right. Um, as everyone can see, Whitley Council has arrived. Um, just for, for, for point of conversation and, and uh, and, and good dialogue. Can you let people know what firm you represent your name? My name is David Doneski from KP Law. Thank you. Okay, um, Brian, can you give us a, re a quick recap of what transpired on the alcohol license at the last meeting? Recap in terms of? How did we get here? How did we get here? Where are we on the continuation of the hearing? Well, we held a hearing on um, May 30th for the, this is an application to transfer the liquor license from um, Demetrios Constantopoulos um, to Whateley Investments LLC. Um, with the, um, and we had a hearing on May 30th and the board felt that it would be wise to have council in attendance. We heard, um, we received public input, I think both for and against uh, the transfer of the application, and the board thought it was wise to continue it um, till tonight. As I recall, as it related to the liquor license, 
of butters had specific concerns about outside activity hours extended hours parking oh and there are probably a few other a few other items as i've been thinking about this and i want you guys to jump in but as i've been thinking about this noise at certain hours is obviously important to abutters especially abutters that are as close as directly over a swamp due east of the castaways um, one of the things that's been eating away at me has been the goal of the new ownership is to increase customer traffic so that they can re realize a return on their investment. If you increase, and I'm just trying to get the conversation started here. If you increase your market share, if you increase the number of people who are going in and out of your estab establishment, and right now I'm just talking about to, to have a beer, to have a glass of wine, to have a drink. I'm not talking about the adult aspect of things at all right now. If your goal is to increase that customer flow through adding big screen TVs or, or whatever other marketing strategies you want to employ as a good business person, how does that not impact traffic flow, parking capacity, and other things that, you know, out, outside conversation because there's a smoking area in the back, how does it not impact abutters and neighbors who are worried about parking traffic smoking. If your goal is to not have a static customer base, but a, a, a growing customer base. And, and I'm curious what the proposed new owners would say about that because it doesn't, it doesn't jive. Can I speak to that? Sure. There are probably 60 parking spaces there. There are more than enough parking spaces for the capacity of the building. There's an exceptionally high number of parking spaces, actually. There are way more parking spaces than are required by your bylaws for a commercial establishment. So parking is really not an issue at all. Okay. In terms of traffic, to the extent that, number one, basically they want to improve and upscale the building and the customer base. So it's not so much bringing in huge, large numbers of people as getting the people who come in paying more money. In terms of the traffic, you actually have a traffic study on 5 and 10, which shows the number of cars at particular hours during the day. And that traffic study shows the cars are there early in the morning and the cars are there between 4 and 6 p.m. This base of customers is customers who are between 8 and 11 p.m. primarily. So there is no impact on traffic. There, the traffic is a fifth of what it is of those hours during rush hour traffic. So traffic is just not an issue either. Um, in terms of noise, I understand that the people who are across the wooded swamp have been bothered because they expressed that at the last meeting. My clients intend to soundproof the smoking area. And if they soundproof the smoking area, they will not be bothered anymore. I've been, I went to the club after our meeting. The club is quite loud inside the club and there is no noise outside the club from the records, the music that are playing inside the club. And in fact, you have a bylaw, you have an adult entertainment bylaw which says that you can't have any noise audible on the street and there's a street right in front within 30 feet or 60 feet of the establishment there's actually two streets i'd say that five and ten is actually closer 
by Christian Lane is 60 feet and the other one's 30 feet. It can't be audible. So except for the smoking area, there isn't an issue about noise. And if, to the extent there's an issue about noise in the smoking area, our intention would be to erect a foot high barriers around the three sides of the smoking area that would prevent noise from emanating outside of the smoking area. So I'm not sure, honestly, what else there is. It's been there for 35 years. There aren't, complete, there aren't police complaints about it. It's been operating. It's been operating all that time without having a noticeable effect on anyone except for perhaps the, the it seems like the neighbors across the swamp. There's a house right across the street and those people have no problem with the club. They are far closer actually. I'm 47 feet away from it, okay? You've never heard me complain about noise, okay? I could stand in the parking lot with a set of binoculars and I can't see his house right now. It's foliage, yeah, and that blocks a lot of sound. But I haven't had a problem with noise like that, and I heard every Harley Davidson from here to hell and back, okay? Oh, Traffic, that was easy too. I took care of that problem. We used to have an accident once a week in that corner. One guy drove through the side of the house, which I haven't patched up yet, as we all know, okay? I cut down all the bushes, took down all the trees out of there. If you, if you get two accidents a year, that's a lot now. You got it. Yes, the police department. But speaking I'm going to let these guys yeah. ask questions first before I open it up to the public. Can you follow up on, on one of your comments, Jonathan, about increased traffic for the, for the new business going in there to make it a profit? You, you were saying they'd have to get more customers in there. I guess I'd like to hear from the new owners is, is one, is that your plan? And, and how different is that gonna be than customers there today? Or how many customers you have today? And is it gonna, is it gonna double or, or, or what? what? What do you envision uh, I, happening there? I, I'm really speaking on their behalf. Well, I, okay, are you, sir? Okay. okay. And um, they're taking over the business they don't know the number of customers who have been there in the past. They really can't speak specifically. They have been there and they've observed customers and they'll observe three or 30 or 40 customers at a time there. Sometimes there's 70 or 80. Uh, they don't, they're not, they're not going to increase the capacity of the building. The capacity is gonna stay exactly the same. It's more about fixing up the building, which is beginning to get into a somewhat ramshackle nature, both inside and outside, redoing a bath, some of the bathrooms inside and making it a more pleasant place to be, which would allow them to increase the number, the, the, the cost of the drinks and the cost. They don't have real food at this point in time. They did have food. It would allow them to charge for that, but they don't have it at this point in time. We're really just talking about drinks and we're talking about entertainment and to the extent that we wanted to ever increase the capacity or the size, we'd have to come back before this board. But I think somewhere the capacity I read was about five feet. Yeah, that's so what that the capacity, is, is, is that ever been approached or, or is that? Well, going to be approached with, with, with the new owners? Is the new owners true? can't speak to whether it's well, ever been approached. The old owners would have to speak to that. They're, they're here. I know that they've done a booming business in the past on different times. They're simply getting old. The, the, the old owner is 81 and he wants to leave. And he's going to sell it to somebody who's going to continue an adult club. Forgive me for asking this follow up. And, and I'm asking this just to find out information. I'm not asking to have a formal opinion one way, one way or another yet. But when I buy a business, I want to know what the revenue stream was that I'm buying. And I want to know what potential revenue stream exists when I take over the business. If, if I don't have those two fundamental 
pieces of market research, I'm not buying business. It, it, it just, it, it, I struggle with understanding how a conversation about purchase of a business can have gone this far without having any idea of how many customers are coming in and out of that facility Tuesday through Saturday nights. I just, it's, it, it's sort of business school 101, in, in, in my humble opinion, and maybe not so humble. But I, I, I want to know what the, what the customer flow has been, I want to know what the revenue generation is, and I want to know what the potential is for growth. And if I don't have those fundamental questions answered, I'm not going to invest what I'm guessing is hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, into the business. So I guess it's, I think of it as a fair question. Well, it's proprietary inter information, isn't it? Through how much people are making. You're not entitled to that. The town's not entitled to that. There's a capacity of 90 there. If you have 70 people there, that would be very nice. That would be a wonderful thing. And there, if you had 70 people there, you'd have 35 cars and you have parking for 50 or 60 cars. And you want those people to stay. So to the extent those people are coming and going, you're adding 20 cars an hour to a traffic flow, which on other times of the day is 10 times as high. So traffic is just not an issue and parking is not an issue. If you had a if you had a capacity, wait, 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 wait. If you, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep this conversation organized somewhat. If you had a capacity of 150 people, John, I would understand that. Okay, mm -hmm. you had a capacity of 150 or 200 people. You had what appears to be 30, 40, 50 people there a night at one time and therefore you're concerned that capacity would go way up and there wouldn't be adequate parking. I still think traffic would be, would be uh, not an issue. A significant increase which affects the roadway. Not just, not just that you've got more traffic going in and out, somehow it affects the safety. That's what the statute says, that's what the entertainment statute talks about. Yes. Joyce, what other questions do you have before we, because I do want to open it up to all sides here. Um, at the moment, my, I, 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 I make this probably just ignorance on my part, but um, I'm curious about the smoking area. Um, what is it now? Is it just like a patio or is it just a portion of the parking lot that, that people go to that sure. is far enough from the entrance or? It, it, it's on the side and it's on the side where there's the swamp. Towards the swamp. Towards, the, side. towards yeah. the swamp. So if you look at it, if you're looking at the building, you're looking at it's on the right side, mm -hmm. actually, or in mm -hmm. the back. And it's an area that's about, about as big as this area here. Uh -huh. And you walk out through a door. And right now there's a fence that's about this high, five feet high. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of made out of nothing. And the intention is to put in an eight foot fence all around it which would be soundproof. Okay, so I can understand the little physics teacher in me. I understand that you'll capture sound going this way. Sound can travel over the top. What kind of a wall would you have to build? And this is kind of towards the swamp side. So now I understand there's like, how many feet would that be from the swamp? It would be exactly where it is now. This little parking area has a fence around it right now. Oh, okay. And it has a cement floor. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's already cemented. It, it exists company. already. Okay. What there is, is there isn't anything that prevents the sound when people are talking in this direction. Yeah. Uh, this is the door direction. I'm in that patio and I'm talking that way and there's nothing that prevents it from going towards the swamp area. It's a tiny, it's a very little area. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not home. bigger than this area here. Do you happen to know what would the walls um, be made of that would make them soundproof? Um, I don't. I, I don't think they've been picked out, but the board okay. can certainly use it. I, we're offering that as a condition. 
that we've put in eight foot soundproof walls. Okay, and, but they would not have a roof. You would not have a roof unless you required a roof, but in a, park, in a smoking area, it would be better if it didn't have a roof. Yes, yes. And that's why I was assuming you would not. Yeah, no, but I mean, they'd, they'd be significantly higher than a person. Mm -hmm. They would be eight feet high, and a person's, let's say, most, most. people who are out there are not going to be over six feet. They're going to be between five and six feet. That's Brian, are there zoning issues around change of offense? I, I don't know, so I'm asking. Big question for the building inspector. Well, if it's there already, it's, it's existing. There, it's existing. How close from the edge of that smoking area to the property line on that side? Oh, a significant yeah. distance. Not, it's not. Well, the parking area, the property line ends where the parking ends, doesn't it? Pretty much. There's a there's at least thirty or forty feet. Look on the. I will pull the assessor's yeah. maps. Yeah. Who wants? Who wants? For those of you who aren't here very often. You do the whole thing. Fred and I always pull up the assessor's maps when we have problems. Yeah, that's great. And there's, if you look at an area that was, I think it shows you that smoke in that little area in the back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that too. And I talked to the building inspector, and there are no zoning issues. I went into Greenfield and talked to him. Okay. <laughs> um, Joyce, do you have that um, right now, or should we open it up until you? I think it? you can open okay. it up to other um, One at a time here. I'll, I'll let you. Yeah. Can you have them stay? Um, can you remind, remind your name again? Uh, Nick Spagnola. I would say one thing that uh, Tommy forgot to mention is that through the, the rear egress of Castaways in the back, you walk through a rear door. And there's probably like maybe four feet or so um, of, uh, what would you say? Steps. It's like walkway, you know, before you hit steps. So I think a good idea would actually be just to enclose that back walkway. So you go through the rear egress of castaways, you're in a little holding cell almost, it's still all enclosed off. And that way you don't hear the music. Once that door shuts, the door actually can open up right below the steps and they can walk down, but there'd be no music coming out of there. It is relatively quiet. Um, when you're on the property, you cannot hear any sound coming from the, the establishment at all now. But just think, for security reasons, we can make some improvements and we're willing to work with you. You know, however you want to make make that happen. Um, but there is a rare egress outside of Castaways. You probably enclose the, the half porch that's there now, and it should be fairly simple and create a, a huge improvement. So, um, okay. so Mayor. Hey, um, as far as traffic, you get a ton of traffic on. Can you say your name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robin McGuffey. I'm sorry? Robin McGuffey. And where do you, where, where do you live? Waitley, Chestnut Plain Road. Okay. And as far as traffic, it's, it's um, Yankee Candles yeah. at 3, at 11, at night, and 3 in the afternoon. That's, or even your new mass traffic out on these streets coming our way. As far as the traffic you're going to get from castaways or foliage you know the foliage on my street is insane but it's like a little bit of traffic you're going to get from there and they might you're all assuming it's going to be a trashy place they might be bringing in nicer food like the half filled pub it used to be a not the greatest place but shelly and her husband made it a nice place to go so and as far as money maybe they're going to charge more for nicer food so you just can't assume all these negatives we want we want in this town, but we don't want industry to help us pay the taxes. It's, it, we need help with taxes in this town. Yeah. You can't shoot down every little thing. That, you know, that's, and the people that don't like it there, when did they buy, before or after castaways? Because I went to elementary school when that was Graves Corner, then it turned to castaways, and all these people moving into town, not liking it, Why'd you move, move to Conway? Move to Hatfield. They don't have clubs there, you know? It's people that move here, move next to a bar, and then have a problem with it. And they expect something different. You know? It's, we're supposed Certain to coexist. Be nice. Mark Boussier and Christian Lane about Stone's Throw from the Castaways. We're not a butters, but we're the closest they come. Uh, I just wanted to address the first part of it, which was the traffic issue. I understand the gentleman said that there's uh, like an eight to two o'clock traffic issue, but we go by there at least four times a day. Obviously, we live right there, so it's not just at eight to two o'clock. Traffic starts when people are coming home from work. A lot of guys on the drive, they stop for a beer, they stop for multiple beers, and then they leave. So traffic many times will be peaking 
at the six o'clock departure from Yankee Candles Factory, we'll be peaking departures and entries into the bar. So saying traffic isn't an issue, it's always an issue on that intersection. It's gotten more so with the, you know, since we've been there, we've only been there 28 years, we're sort of newcomers. So it's been an issue more when the, the uh, during those peak times of traffic, but that's also the, the drive time for the bar. Many people will come later on for the adult entertainment, but there's a whole group of people that seem to come and go at that six o'clock hour for, for a beer after work. So that's part of it. Go ahead. Yeah, if I could add something to that. I'm, uh, my name's Catherine McGrail, and uh, I am also in Christian Lane, uh, about 300 feet away from the Castaway Bar. And I actually wrote a whole sort of list of things, which basically echoed what you started with, Mr. Edwards, is that um, one of our largest concerns is the uh, amount of traffic, which has a number of issues related to that. We have to assume that the reason that these gentlemen are buying the bar is because they see it as a good investment. And granted, we've, I, mean, I, I hesitate to use the word tolerated, we purchased our property when the bar was there. But we always saw it as um, part of the community that was tolerated because it was understated. Uh, we never, ex or very few times have we ever experienced any problems with the Castaway Bar. Occasionally there have been times that in the summer when the windows are open and it's warm, you sometimes can hear some arguing going outside um, in the parking lot, but that doesn't happen very often. There is no doubt, and I think the gentleman over there alluded to it, that um, there definitely has been an uptick in accidents at that intersection. There's no doubt about that. And if these gentlemen are interested in trying to improve the appearance of the Castaway Bar, perhaps add food to it, we, can, we have to assume that the population is going to go up, you know, the patronage is going to go up. That's their interest. It has to be. Otherwise, they wouldn't purchase this. So if the patronage goes up, the amount of traffic is going to go up. If the uh, expansion of hours is it, it's, it's going to be expanded, then obviously we're going to see a lot more traffic during additional hours of the day and additional days as well. So my biggest concern, and, and I think my husband's as well, is that that's going to not only potentially um, create a burden on the taxpayers in the town because we may need additional police force or they may have to expand their hours as a result of this. Once you have more traffic, once you have more people, you have the possibility of things happening, accidents happening, so you may need more ambulance service as a result of that. So all of those things sort of play into the possibility that this bar is going to attract that many more people. Mm. And once you attract that many more people, you're, that's inherently going to potentially cause problems in relation to traffic. Um, in relation to, um, well, I actually wrote this down. If you don't mind me reading no, it really quickly? No, no. Okay. Um, primarily, my concern relates to the suggestion that the new owners plan to lengthen the hours of operation, improve the facade of the facility, and serve food. Um, I have to assume there's going to be special licensing around that, but I don't know what that might be. Um, and that it's going to further encourage a uh, greater patronage of the establishment. And that's the biggest concern. If it does, we can expect an uptick in traffic well beyond what the gentleman, the, the attorney, has suggested is like, oh, there's not that much traffic now, but why buy the bar unless you want to increase traffic and patronage? This would create a greater burden on our police department. Uh, we'd have to hire more police, request overtime. It's the case the taxpayers would bear the burden of this, so Waitley would actually have to bear the burden of this. As well, there could be an added burden on our fire department uh, because of potential for accidents, and already that intersection has seen a lot more accidents over the years. We've seen it happen. Um, and that also could create a relative increase in our car insurance rates as well, because once there are more accidents in a town, our rates go up. So the more people who frequent the castaway bar, the greater the potential for criminal activity, whether it be in the form of altercations, drug use, trafficking, sexual misconduct. I don't know that that's necessarily a given. When you have more people in an area and there's drinking involved, the chances of that do go up. So all of this could potentially cause a de decrease in the, in the property of the surrounding abutters and uh, certainly could discourage further development in the town. And again, taxes could go up. So those are some of our greater concerns. So I don't know if 
requiring um, uh, the new owners to, uh, you know, some sort of bylaws or whatever else you might want to impose to make sure that it still remains understated if this purchase does go through? Are there things that the town could do? Could we put a vote to the town to allow, disallow, things like that? I'm not sure if those things are possible because I don't know that much about town politics. But those are some of the concerns that I have, and I know some of the other people who live close by us have even larger concerns, some of which have already been talked about. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks for the time. Judge, you're not? Yes. Um, I just look, Joe Zawinski, 59 Christian Lane, uh, Director Butter. Um, just to answer a couple of questions, one from uh, a woman who's just not in her backyard, but she, she says, you know, why do we buy the house? Yeah. You know, my head wasn't in the sand when I bought the house 22 years ago. I understood what it was. My big concern right now is the increase in business, the increase in hours, okay, and the potential of going seven days a week. Okay. We've lived with an understated business as it goes, but as everybody has said throughout this whole conversation that we've had, is that they are going to try to increase business, okay? That is a change. That's a change from when I bought that property, okay? That answers that, answers that, that question. Uh, for the individual that lives across the street, you know, I will say he had his house run into by somebody from the castaways. He doesn't really care about it. He hasn't even fixed it. So I don't know really what we're bothering really listening to that about. I'm 45 that, feet that, away. Yeah, yeah you're 45 feet away. Oh, you're really oh, carry about, carry about, care care about your house. We're not going to. So that's, that seems, that, that's sure. fine. I will agree that you can walk, okay, by that house and you're hearing limited noise. I don't know why we're talking about concessions right now. If we vote to, or if you vote to, approve this tra this transfer, then we should be talking about concessions. But if we are gonna talk about concessions and we're talking about building walls around a smoking area, okay, I would say build a wall, okay, along the whole parking lot because there is a lot of pedestrian traffic from the cars, the 60 car parking lot to the building, okay? That's one I would, I would request. On top of that, why don't we take that smoking area and put it on the other side of the building, on the Route 10 side, to put it next to my neighbor's house and not next to my house. That's a concession that I would like to see if this is voted and approved. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? So just a couple points of clarification. My Thank name you. is Sheila Zawinski, and I live at 59 Christian Lane. So um, someone had mentioned about foliage being a great block, and this that's true at this time of year, but it's New England. So guess what happens for the spring and the winter and the fall? That foliage is not there and does not protect. You know, and to someone else's point, I agree that we've learned to kind of be good neighbors, and they've been good neighbors to us because it's been, and it's a great word to use, understated. So if the capacity is 90 people, you know, how often has it been at full capacity? Not very often. And guess who knows that? We who live there and who see it every day. In terms of the traffic, Yankee Candle is 6 a.m., 2 p.m., and 10 p.m. So that is the largest influx. And 10 p.m. is a, a very high traffic area for people leaving after having visited, you know, for work. So those are, those are really the active time frames. Um, and again, so I think about a person's comment that you know what you were getting into when you bought the house. Yes, because when we bought it, at the time we bought the house, it was an understated, kind of mom and pop, didn't stand out, part of the weekly, and it is a business and it brings in revenue for us, and that's a great thing. But I feel like the town has done other wonderful things in terms of allowing new development, building houses. We talked about at the town meeting that the average value of our homes has actually increased because of some of this new building. All those uh, homeowners are paying taxes as well. So the town's taken on some very good strategies, not just from allowing new businesses to come in, but managing the businesses that we have in a responsible way, allowing responsible growth, but at the end of the day, you look at that seal, that is a rural community. We are a farming community. 
And so uh, an increase in this kind of volume, I don't feel fits with Waitley's identity. There, you know, there are places for it, and I don't think Waitley is it. I'm going to ask two. Go ahead. Uh, Matt Gustafson, I live on North Street. Uh, is it part of the public record how much income this business actually brings in to the town of Whiteley? No. It's so not. we have no idea if it's a thousand dollars a year or uh, <coughs> <coughs> thousand. Well, yeah. tax and taxes would certainly be, but taxes would be property taxes and also what we would get from the uh, meals and alcohol okay, so taxes. That, that would and, be and we can buy that out. I don't have that. Um, because then you could at least do some basic math. Yeah, that's what I'm see what, what about. Is, and, it's, and it's a great question. I'm, I'm going to ask two questions just so that one's going to be a question that you guys probably don't like, and one's going to be a question that you probably don't like just because I, I want to try to get to the bottom of this. And, and I'm going to ask you guys the question first. The, the improvements that are being suggested, improvements to a business can happen by a current owner or a new owner. And I admit I'm struggling with if, if if Jimmy and his wife had decided we want to improve because we want to increase customer flow. There wouldn't have been a transfer of a liquor license. He would have just done it. And I hope that he would have done it in consultation with neighbors to make sure that their understanding of what he's trying to accomplish, et cetera. But he would have just done it and he would have been allowed to just do it unless he was going to make, you know, unless he needed a building permit or, or, or what have you. I get, get that. But I'm struggling with just because someone wants to improve a business and the fact that there's a transfer of a license involved, how is it different? So to me, John, the difference is, and do I need to say my name again? No. Okay. So to me, John, the difference is that you, again, have, I, I'm going to call them a mom and pop shop. It's been a mom and pop shop. It's kind of like, you know, Hitchcock Brewing down the street. They're not looking to compete with the Polish club. They have a small little venue. You know, they're looking to have a business to support their lifestyle and all that sort of thing. If they had wanted to improve it and make it this big grand thing where they're bringing people up from Springfield, they would have done it. And they chose not to. I don't know what the reasons for that are, but they chose not to because they were happy with the status quo and the size of it fit well with our agricultural community. The people that are wanting to buy it now are not from around here. They are wanting to grow it, and I'm gonna say tremendously. It's a big investment for them. They have multiple other investments, some other ones that are potentially in the area as well. These are guys that are in it for the money. And yes, oh, they're gonna move here so that they can keep their eye on the business, but would they be moving here if they weren't gonna be Doing this business, no. They don't are interested in living in Waitley. They're you know, people that like to live in Boston where there's action and things going on. So to me, it's a different fit. It's not the right fit. But they could have they expanded could have. their business if they had chose to and we wouldn't be sitting here. And they did. Well you right? would have, you would have been looking at, at the, how often does their liquor license get renewed. Right. Every so year. we would have so we could have brought that up at that point. At that point. Right. But in terms of just I want to expand my business because I want to make more money, they could have done. But if there was other problems, we would have been sitting there. Absolutely. Right? No so so no I mean, that didn't happen. Right. So we didn't sit there. Okay. I guess and my other my, my question is gonna go back to the park. Sure. Before that, can I can I give you guys a map? I'd love to. A Google map? Yeah. I've got the Google map up. Okay, but I'm going to give you a copy of it, okay? It shows the parking spaces, clearly, in relationship to the building. It shows the abutters in relationship to the building. So I just thought I would like to hear the record, if you can answer that. I to enter in the record. You, you can see how many parking spaces there are. I might need a magnifying glass, but you can. And, 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 this, and this goes exactly to my question, so I appreciate I appreciate the, the, the picture. I, I, think, I, I think it's I think it's hard to see it without without the picture. Right, I, I get it. Because I I didn't understand it until I walked the area. And, and I'll admit I'm not a traffic engineer. And the only time I've been in the parking lot is when I'm turning around. But I look at this picture. And if and, 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 and Jimmy, I'm going to ask you to chime in here, maybe. 
if there were a car, if there was a car in every single parking spot, I, I'm struggling with how the parking lot with the parking spaces doesn't get incredibly crowded because I'm not seeing sufficient distance between one row of parking and another row of parking. And if there were, again, this picture has, you know, eight to 12 cars in it. If this picture had 60 cars in it, and I don't think I've ever, and I live 500 yards away as the crow flies, maybe a thousand yards, I don't know. I've never seen the parking lot full, ever, in my 35 years that I've been in Waverly. What happens if this is full, and that's their goal, obviously, to increase customer flow? And I, and I, and I. The, the capacity of 96 people, okay? Um, there but, is there there is no huge capacity here. You have a bylaw which says that all the parking has to be on premises. Um, you have a bylaw which has the number of parking spaces for the number of customers who are allowed on the premises. And I don't remember whether it's three or a parking space for every three or four customers actually. It's one or the other. So it would either be 20 odd parking spaces or 30 parking spaces. And it's laid out, I agree, it's laid out in, in a way where there are probably 70 or 80 parking spaces. And you would, you're gonna have, you might lay it out in a different way. But there's more than, you can look at it, there's more than adequate parking for 30 or 40 cars. And that's what your bylaws are for commercial establishments. <laughs> Less than that, actually. Excuse me for interrupting. We just finished a parking lot <laughs> doing a, a large job with Marion Excavation up down in Hadley. And there's a very specific state law that specifies exactly how parking spaces have to be laid out in order to accommodate backing up proper egress and all that in the space. And uh, I don't think, I've never seen any kind of uh, uh, proper lines in the parking lot that would show at least the, the current requirements for parking. So whatever number of cars they say could fit in the parking lot, it's probably grossly overstated because of the requirements, as you said, to be able to get in, get out. Uh, people can't just park, obviously, you know, front to back. And uh, I would like to see a reasonably accurate number of how many spaces are legally allowed there, not just what will fit. So just quickly, 90 cars, say it is 90, say it's 50, whatever the number is, 50, it's not 50 cars coming in and staying there for an eight hour shift. It's 50 and 50 more and 50 more if, if we allow this to, to happen without, without, without some restrictions. If we could keep it to the size it is now, if there's a way to work towards that, that's the issue. It's 50 and 50 more and 50 more and 50 more and two additional days and oh, an extra hour at night at a, at a tough time, you know, when people have been drinking and it's late at night and we don't have a lot of police there to support. That's the issue. It's the 50 and the 50 and the 50 and the 50 and the 50. <coughs> so what everyone's saying is if you purchase, you put money into a building like we're putting into the town hall, Robin McGuffey, Robin McGuffey, but you're, we're putting all this money into the town hall, is that to just increase traffic, uh, business there? I mean, you guys are assuming the craziest things. You're not seeing the cup half full. You keep thinking of these awful things, but we're throwing all this money into the town hall. Is that so... Was that for to increase traffic and business and everything? I mean, it doesn't have to be that way. It's, um, it's you guys are running away with like, we're going to be having the eastern states here or something. It's, it's a little way hard. In. The way we in. You know, it's like yeah. ridiculous. I, I made it a point last time too to give out my cell phone, my email, contact to anyone that had an issue with the proposed idea. Joe and Sheila, I tried to talk to you guys, you folks, and. No one called me, it's been two weeks. I was very sincere about 
working the solution and, and putting something together with you guys that would help alleviate any, uh, basically any inconvenience that you guys have faced. And we're still willing to do that and be a good neighbor, but to not just give me a courtesy call over the past two weeks. Um, I just think we're very sincere about making this a, a good place. It doesn't happen overnight. That's the reality. It's not like we acquire it, we close, and all of a sudden it's busy. There's a lot of inefficiencies at this place. You know, there's no point of sale system, there's no inventory controls. So we have uh, a long way to go before it is uh, maybe busy or maybe this capacity gets filled up. But I've been back and forth uh, in Waitley and surrounding areas over the past five years. I was introduced to this area by a colleague of mine whose family is a big farmer in this community as well. So, okay, do I live here now? No, but I've, I've been back and forth for a few years and uh, there's a lot of inefficiencies at this place. We don't close on it, and then all of a sudden, it's 100 people are showing up. There's a lot that has to go in place, admin-wise, um, control-wise, inventory-wise, before we can get a, a good read on this place and, and see what else we can do. There are some necessary improvements to the exterior that we'd like to do to clean it up. Um, bathrooms, we really would like to clean up. Put a new roof on. Um, the eight-foot fence or so, Okay, we can work on that, um, but I think a better solution is just enclosing that back porch. Security cameras all around to scare any type of riffraff. Um, everyone's gonna know they're being recorded through the exterior of the club in the smoking room, so everyone's gonna be put on notice, and I think the staff, um, from at least from Los Angeles, have all been put on notice that no games, no funny business, we're coming in to run a clean, straight place and to be here for a long time. Um, last time I was a little shocked. You know, I was almost questioning why millennials would want to live here. I think that hopefully is the goal to, to bring in some new people that want to stay here, to live here, and to build a life here. And it may sound odd that I'm coming from Boston and want to build a life here, but okay, you know, let me live. That's that's, that's really it. Um, so Joe, Sheila, again, extend another opportunity, come to the table to, to talk with me, to talk with my partner Julius, to work on a real solution, and so we can coexist together. Because um, I am a, a young man and I do plan to be here in this town for a long time to come, and I look forward to it. So. Love to be a good neighbor and get to know you a little bit more. So again, cell phone, email. I only got calls from people wanting to sell me some real estate. And for that, I appreciate all those calls and I am looking. And uh, so I really appreciate it. And you know, so thank you. Sir. Uh, Damon Guffey, Chestnut Plain Road. Uh, the, the one problem I see in all of this is back in the day when it's a farming community and they said we have 60 parking lots or 60 spots for people to park. They planned on that many people It never filled that, that spot, that, that capacity, but that's what they were planning on then, but now nobody wants it. My point. I, I'm gonna throw something out because we can't, we have another license transfer to get to. I'm wondering, and I may be pleased to suggest this, would the new owners of Butters at 51, Christian Lane, and other close abutters be willing to sit down with representatives from the town to work out differences that might, and I, there's no guarantee that it would, that might actually appease both sides so that, I'll speak for myself, I would feel comfortable with a transfer of the liquor license. I, I guess I hear, and it's a, it's a gracious offer to sit down, I think that the abutters have some very valid concerns. Um, I think that the suggestion about a parking study on this footprint is a marvelous one because I, I, I really struggle. It's, it's all, already a non-conforming lot, so I really struggle with how it, how it works getting in and out of, it, knowing that people just drive across the parking spots now to, to, to get to where they're, wherever they're gonna park. Would you guys be amenable to sitting down and having the town sort of serve as a, as, as a, as a, as a mediator in making sure that, that uh, So with that statement that you're making, are you saying that you're not gonna take a vote on that tonight? I don't, I don't know yet, Joe, I'm asking the question. Okay. 
So I, I would I would answer that question is if you're not going to take a vote on that tonight, then in a limited capacity, I think having people on Chestnut Plain Road uh, sitting in on a meeting like this would be inappropriate. Uh, but I would want the butters or somebody across the street. Um, I'm certainly willing to sit down and uh, and have that conversation. So yes, I think I'm speaking for my family there. We want to be reasonable as well. Um, but we 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 do we do you know want to stand our ground on a lot of these items, and I'm I'm willing to or I think we're willing to sit down and discuss these things. And I'm just speaking for myself. I, I don't have the authority to just say we're going to do that. Obviously, but the whole yeah. board needs to. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. throw out ideas. Yeah. So yeah. 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 You would have to post the public meetings. So I'm not constrained. I would ask attorney. No, if 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 this board is inconvenient, there's no decision making authority. authority. If it was one member of the board, we would not have to have. Right. Right. <laughs> Speaking well, on behalf we, of the board, zero. what would we do with the outcome of that meeting? It would be brought before continuation of the. Give it to that. Whatever no, we're not bound to anything. It just this is what was discussed. If we could come to a resolution, we would bring the resolution to the board, and then the board could factor that into its decision-making process about whether to issue the the, the permit transfer. Uh, and I, would think, I would like to speak. It should not be any member of this board who participates in that meeting because you are the deciding okay. and oh. authority. If you have a representative of the town, it should be someone who's not going to be making the Okay. okay. Thank you. But the, that the, uh, I think what he basically said was uh, it could not be a member of the select board uh, in the uh, negotiation, but if that's really what it's uh, about. But where the, the butters are con uh, airing their concerns and trying to come up with, with good, I think, conditions that could be placed on a license that would address the concerns of the butters, that it could not be one of us. It could be some other representative of the town, such as, I don't know. I, I give it to Brian. I know his plate's already pretty full. But. We've got a, a question or a comment from yeah. Attorney Lesser. I mean, town council will tell you that you can't deny a license based on speculation. You can't deny a license right. based on possibility. I've litigated these, these, these cases before. I've litigated them in state court. I've litigated them in federal court. I've, I've, I've made close to a million dollars in attorney's fees to litigating these cases. The statute is really clear. You can't deny it unless there's a factual basis to deny it. And what we've heard tonight is we heard from one person that most, many of the people are already driving past. They come out of Yankee Candle and they're already driving past and they stop. So those people aren't increasing traffic. We heard from one of the abutters, there have been very few problems with the castaways in the, in, the, in, the, in the past. There's no factual basis for denial. And we're willing to, we're willing to ensure that sound does not travel to the neighbor's house. You can put that in as a condition. We're willing That's to we accept that. About. We're, we're talking willing, about conditions. We're willing to accept that as a condition. But, but I'm, not, I'm not saying that this is based upon my plan to deny. I'm saying that I'm trying to facilitate a conversation so that new neighbors have a strong working relationship with old neighbors. I'm not, I'm not this is not about deny or, and, and I do want to, um, I, I do want to have a, 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 a study done of the physical footprint of, of the parking lot. I, I think that's important. Well, it's also a non-conforming use. So what it is, it is. Well, I, I would like to get opinion on that and, 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 and find out and find out more because I'm not I'm not convinced of that. Again, Attorney Lester, I'm, 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 it's, I admit it, it's my nature to try to find compromise. I'm trying to find compromise so that everybody is happy with the liquor license transfer. And I see the town as a natural mediator is probably not the right word, but a facilitator of a conversation to see if we can come to some general consensus to make everybody say, yes, this works for me. And I, I honestly don't see the problem with having that conversation. 
Am I am I being am I working too hard to compromise? Maybe, but that's who I am. Well, all I've heard is I've heard there's really realistically there's a noise issue, and if you we put a condition on the transfer that eliminates the noise issue, really, what else is there to talk about? Well, the, the part I think is, is, is an issue. I, I genuinely do. Well, Increase in pedestrian traffic, incidents of disruptive well, conduct, and unreasonably increasing the level of noise. Thanks. It's right. right from the statute. But people Park are not walking there. Yeah. In the parking lot, they are. It's not pedestrian traffic. I, I understand a lot of the conversation, especially from the gentleman, has been, it's always been this way, and it's never going to, it's not going to change. And you asked the question, well, what's the difference between if uh, the current owner had done improvements and what we're doing now? And my response to that, as you were saying, it was the difference is that we're here. We actually have now a voice where we didn't have before if the current owner was just doing improvements. The law has given us, or the town has given us, a voice in what happens in our town. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that I can make the place go away. You know, we've raised our family here, and every time, every time I say where we're from, oh, Whaley Ballet. That's something we all live with. It's not something we all like, but it's something we live with. So having the voice of saying, can we have certain conditions so that, I don't want this to become the Worthington, I don't want Christian Lane to become the Worthington Street with the Mardi Gras and the neon and everything else that you see in the improvements that are sometimes done to clubs. And I understand they're trying to generate more revenue, more business. By doing so, it might make it just a much more more of an eye store for the town that we really want to have. Uh, even though it might be attractive as a business, that's not necessarily what we want to see in the corner of our streets. Let me ask you, gentlemen, would you be able to that conversation? I think it's, it's you know, all, all due respect. I, made, I really did make a sincere attempt to reach out to Joe and Sheila. <coughs> um, coordinating with neighbors, solving grievances, something I would do anyways. Um, I would ask to transfer the license and we can continue the conversation. I'm willing to talk to Joe and Sheila anytime. I, I've gotten a number of calls this week and I've picked up every single one. Um, and I don't miss a phone call. So we've been trying to do that anyway. What's the downside of what I proposed? I'm curious. Um, I think it, I'd probably leave it to uh, uh, the, the current owner's attorney, you know, as far as timeline and, and stress for these folks. but. Uh, that's I would leave the downside to uh, the current owner's attorney. Um. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying what John is proposing is a little different than hey, she'll give me a call. I think she's he's actually proposing something that's a lot more structured, something that's mediated, <coughs> facilitated, uh, and and I think that it would feel different to me if I was in the butter. If there was kind of somebody from my town, there's someone knowledgeable about bylaws, somebody knowledgeable about some of the history. So I, I don't, I don't buy the equivalence. Um, I don't see how your idea can work if we don't continue the hearing. Though uh, that's that's definitely true. Yeah. Uh, the attorney here had a question first or a statement first, and then we're going to go over here. Richard, <coughs> yes. Once again. Uh, members of the select board, uh, I represent the current licensees. Um, and I've listened with interest here this evening in terms of a number of issues that have been raised uh, in connection with the operation of the, uh, with the operation of the Castaway Lounge. Uh, as we all know, it's been there and operating for some, I think somebody said 35 years, I think it's probably a little bit longer. Uh, it is situated on a your major artery in this town. You do have zoning bylaws which regulates the use. You have the zoning bylaws which regulates the uh, parking uh, places, the number of parking places. You have state laws that uh, and fire department laws that regulate the occupancy and the seating within that capacity. Uh, this has basically all been speculation. There's been a lot of discussion about conditions that you're able to place upon the transfer of this license. And uh, without putting anybody on the spot, I might invite you to inquire of your town council. Uh, he uh, wasn't here the last time, and continuing it to this evening was one of the reasons that it was continued so he could be present. 
But in terms of placing conditions, I've heard uh, remarks tonight where uh, there might want to be conditions with respect to the volume of business that this uh, uh, operation can continue to uh, can continue to operate at. I mean, those are ridiculous. Uh, that's not within your that's not within the province or your duties and responsibilities as a local licensing commission. All due respect, yes. I, don't, I don't think that that message was conveyed by anyone on this board. No, I, it, it wasn't. Okay. But it's been suggested that that should be one of the conditions that you should that consider. That was not no, conveyed by anybody on this I board. totally agree. Let me just say one, one thing that, that's been bothering me not so much about the, the transfers here, but as, as a citizen of the town is is that intersection traffic coming at that intersection is blocked vision is blocked by cars in a parking lot uh, I can tell you almost every day this week you go there no matter what time of day and there's a car parked right next to the side of five and five that you cannot see up the road traffic coming on 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 route five and ten the state, that's a state road. The state has designed standards for sight distance, intersection sight distance. You look in the state design manual for intersections and you have to go back. You should be able to see 200 feet up the road. You look at the map, you look at here, vehicles in that triangle. If, and my concern for the people of the town is anybody who's in that intersection should have clear sight distance. You, you, you're allowing cars to park, blocking that distance, creating a hazard. That should at least be corrected. I don't know whether it's three or five. It's not 30 cars. It's it's probably a one or two hands. You can count the number that need to be uh, restricted from that clear sight distance. That's a hazard to anybody using Christian Lane Road. I don't think they That's a hazard. <coughs> well, you know. there there is other other conditions yeah. for for that. But Down home. Down home. yes, sir. Or around the valley on the closest of butter okay as I told you there was many many accidents in that intersection a couple of years ago they were having them almost on a weekly basis okay I remember this no accidents over at the uh, over to Jimmy's place none I pull out all the bushes the accidents stop last winter you had one guy drive off into the ditch the other accident you had i believe the kid that, that he had sun in his eyes coming from the uh east okay and he got into an accident there i see everyone okay i see the thousand cars coming out of uh yankee candle every night they're in my my room they're in my living room seven feet away from my living room is a blinking light and it don't stop every day huh Put shades up for it. Try it. You got to get used to it. It's like the, the guy that lives in the train tracks, you know. And I'm in favor. Right. And, and, and I'm just, I'm just. I think screening might help out a lot. Okay. For, for, for Joe people over people there. Down. I, I, the people complaining noise are next to a fire mm. department. Waitley Inn can't have cars parked in front of the post office. That's against the law. Okay. But they're everywhere. Uh, the restaurant down in Hatfield went through that, and I'm, I'm from Hatfield, and I remember this. They actually put up signs, no parking. But yet, you look at the Waitley Inn, that entire parking lot is full. Town's property and federal government property. And that's not 200 no, yards. You can't see those 200 yards. I just want to address uh, the, the um, invitation to sit down and discuss. Um, to answer the reason why it's not your it's not your issue um, but we had <clears throat> years back we had a solar array that went up in our backyard okay there was we sat down they came to my property we walked it we had a conversation nicest guys in the world right promises were not upheld so forgive me for not trusting everything and letting things go through the process that they will I, I'm more than willing to sit down. I, I spoke for my family, okay? But don't, please don't make it sound like we're not cooperating. We went through something in this town that affected my real estate. Um, 
So we have reasons why we try to stay clear and let the process play itself out. Yes, I'd say we, we definitely we understand that after 43 years that the transfer of the license is um, be a little complex. It's um, a lot of anxiety coming up and a lot of good concerns. And uh, like I said, we want to be a good neighbor. So sitting down, um, coordinating, really coming up with the plan of action that we can execute, um, we're all for it. So. Yeah. Great, thank you. So what I'd like to propose the next steps are would be um, is that we will appoint someone, perhaps it would be Brian, I, I, I don't know, but I'm not going to, it's inside baseball to figure out who it would be at this point. They will reach out to both of you gentlemen and your attorney, as well as immediate quote unquote abutters. <laughs> on Christian Lane, on 510. Um, again, I live 500 yards as the crow flies. I would not consider myself an abutter because there's a big potato field between me and everything else. So I'm gonna use that as sort of a ballpark circumference. Um, I will request that that meeting be initiated by Brian with whomever is designated as people in that thing. And, and then we're gonna vote on this, you guys, but I'm just sort of laying it out. Um, and that will happen as quickly as we can possibly do it because I understand your business concerns. I understand the concerns that we have over here. And I genuinely, as, as far as it goes with the liquor license, I want to find a resolution to this. Are you okay with that? For designation purposes, for compliance with the open meeting law, you should designate the person at this time, or you could request that the town administrator select someone. But the action of designating either the person or That's the process by which it's done okay. has to be done in a meeting. <coughs> okay. Brian. <laughs> town administrator or, or his or designee. His or his designee can not do that, so he could designate. He could designate. Did. And who might I designate? I don't know. Jim is here. Okay, that, I, I make a motion, all of the above, that Brian would designate within the next, and, and I would like to add to this. That, Excuse that, me, that yes. you're still in a public hearing. You're not in the yeah. board session at the moment. You're in a public hearing, so you can't pass a resolution because you still have to hear from the public. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you can continue to hear, but you're fine to proceed. But you can you proceed when the public hearing is closed. Okay. No. But no, or, or not. I'm, I'm going to. How do we proceed? If you want to take this action now and don't want to hear any further on this particular application, you may do so. If people still want to speak, you may hear them. But especially where what you're going to do tonight contemplates a future session, you're not going to be closing the public right. hearing. We're continuing the public hearing. Yeah. Okay. So forgive me for my. <laughs> We are, I'd like to make a motion to continue the public hearing. Excuse me, can, can I, have, I have one question. I, absolutely. In the public hearing. Uh, Fred Barron, North Street. I was just noticing on page four of the application for the beverage license, there's a question that was left unanswered by Mr. Spagnuolo on the left side of the page, and I was wondering if we get an answer to that. Fred, what is it? Have you ever been convicted of a state, federal, or military crime? No, no. No. Okay, okay. I, yeah. that, that's fine. It, it, there's, 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 there's no dive. There's no. It's not. It's not answered. Oh, okay. The answer is no. Okay. For the record. Fine. Before we go, can I ask counsel? I guess is there a, a time period from when they applied for transfer of license that we have to act on? Is there 60, 90 days, or what? There's a. 30-day period in which to take up the application by the representation of the applicant that they are willing to engage in this dialogue that you've proposed. I would take it that the applicant is consenting, but I would recommend that you specify a particular time frame and have it on the record that everyone is in agreement with that time frame. First of all, for this meeting that you're discussing, and second, for your next hearing session. Okay, but, but after that hearing session, well, either at the hearing session or after we have to make a decision, this board has to make a decision. Is there a time, is there a time I, 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 I think that? you would expect that at your next hearing session, you'd be taking a vote. Making a decision. That, that's, yes. that's how the 
Okay. Okay. The table has been set, if you will. Um, and, you know, I'll be the first to admit that the calendar is not our friend because of summertime and, 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 and people being away and what have you. Um, I, I would like to, so based on that, I would like to make a motion to continue the public hearing to a date to be scheduled. It's got to be a specific, no, be a specific date. You guys can figure out what. You're away the last week. Available <coughs> on the 28th. And, and I am not. I'm available on the 27th. I'm available. The 27th is when I. That's that isn't that the date of our. As well, and select board. Yeah. 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 The economic development is not the select board meeting, though. That's the we'll schedule, but no agenda. Okay. What about what about Brian? If we, and I'm sorry, you guys have to listen to this inside baseball. What if we had the economic development piece, and then the entire select board meeting would be this hearing with no other business taken up? I don't know when the economic development session is supposed to end. Well, that's within our. I would guess it's probably six to eight. So that is that where is that meeting? Wait, no, I'm not just looking. Okay. So we can meet at eight. Because I'm sure everybody in this room wants to meet at eight uh, o'clock at night. Seven thirty somewhere. Let's finish it at seven thirty, and we will continue this at seven thirty on the twenty seventh. When's it? Twenty seventh. At the elementary school. That's fine. I mean, it has to be, so, right? Yeah, that was Sorry, June 27th. So June 27th. So the, committee, the, the uh, mediation you're talking about with this committee would have to meet before that date. The mediation will have to meet before that date, and I would like the mediation to be scheduled within a 48-hour period, period of time. <coughs> let's do the, the hearing. The hearing. Let's, let's continue the hearing. In motion. Okay. Okay. I make a motion to continue the hearing until the 27th of April, I'm um, June, at 7:30 p.m. In this space. In at the way at, at the way, way the way elementary, elementary school, school on Long Plain Road. Uh, second in motion. Got to say the only. Oh, all in favor. Aye. Aye. What was the second? All right. Approved second. unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Town Council recommended we set something with the uh, butters as well, right? That time, that's not going to be, presuming you're not going to have a quorum of any public body present that will not be subject to open meetings, so that can be scheduled as okay. the schedules okay. of the parties and the participants permit. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion that the town is represented by Brian Domina, our town administrator, or a um, a designee of, of that, that Brian chooses. Second. Okay. Now that we've had that much fun, you, 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 when, when you, when you, you have to say all in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. All of them. May, may I? Council has a question. And yeah. I, I also recommend that you ask council on the record for the what I take to be the assent to the procedure you're taking where his clients have indicated they're willing to participate. I would just want that to be on the record for everyone. Okay. You had a question first? What day are you continuing this to and where? I didn't understand it. Um, Wednesday, June 27th at 7.30 p.m. at the Whateley Elementary School, which is on Long right Plain Road. Right down the street. In Whateley. June 27th. And per our council's suggestion, um, I want to make sure that council and the proposed buyers, I'm sorry, I can't figure out how to refer to you guys, so I apologize for that, um, are okay with this this resolution, temporary resolution. Yes. Okay. And you guys are okay with this. Everybody else in the room okay with this? Okay. For 
and that's for continuing. That's for continued. We will we will continue okay. to that date, and in between there, though th this date and the 27th, we will have a conversation. And people, I would strongly encourage you to bring everything you would like to have as part of that discussion to that table. And I sincerely hope that you can come to a resolution that everyone is comfortable with. Is it with directive other unless you should get it, the directive? Well, I, again, I want to, that's, that's fair. Certainly, Christian Lane, Christian Lane, Route 510. Am I missing anybody else on Christian Lane that's within? Well, yeah, let's say, let's say a, 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 a circumference, yeah. a, a diameter, radius. whatever. Do what? A radius. A radius. Yeah. Yeah. You have the Thank map you. in front of you. Sure. Um, you've got some to the north. You've got north of 5 and 10. On your feet. I, one feet. You feet. could include, well, the old roof house is empty. You could invite the new owners. It's just been sold as a good neighbor. I, I, again, I'm just throwing that out because they are new and it, it will impact. They're pretty close. And they're how far from your house, so. You got a five and 10 both ways within, within what, several hundred feet? South and north of Christian Lane at five and 10, you got residents. Well, you make a suggestion then, Fred, because I, Hundred meters is three hundred feet. That doesn't even include the zone. Well, you. I don't know how you. Maybe the butters. Well, you only have south of the intersection. You got the one household. Okay, probably household there. North of Christian Lane, on uh, one yeah. side you, you have, have three one, households. You got the greenhouse thing with the plants, and on the other side you, you've got. Besides Mr. Lavalley in the corner, I think there's what three more after you on that side. So I would suggest inviting at least them on five and ten. I would agree, especially since one of those homes does have children in it. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming the town's going to invite people. We're not inviting anyone. We don't know who they are. Okay. Well, I guess that it's going to come down to Brian, yeah. our designee for. The okay. I, so who am I inviting? And what are you looking for that you're in here tonight? Again, I'll fall on my sword that I I, I, I want to be inclusive. I, I just want to be inclusive. I think well, we all pay taxes. We all pay the same tax rate. I think about that. That's a big So do it. We all pay taxes. My estimate is that Sheila's house is about. So I'm getting invited. Is within 500. I, we can't have, we, we, this, this would be, because it doesn't impact directly your property. It shows you the distances of all the All right, you know what? We're going to let, I would suggest we let Brian figure this out. We should, you should definitely, either by property or by a distance. Okay. There's, there are the, the, the. 300 feet is typical for a special permit. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. Would that include uh, the people who are in this room? It's, it's to yes. the property line. To the property line. So yes, it, it would. It would include Mark okay. and his wife? So 300 feet. Um, so 300 feet. Squeeze down here. Uh, this is where Mark is here? Well, let's designate specific yeah. people then. Uh, yes. I'm just trying to, I just don't want to miss anybody as I go through it in my head. We've had two meetings. We know the vet, we know the players. Yes. Let's just talk to them then. I don't know how you do this. You guys, we got to move this forward. That way we don't have to Zewinski, yeah. Boussier, um, uh, Lavalley, Camp, all the way up to the camps. So which, is on the, which is on the west side of 510 going north. Gasowinski. Camp? Camp and, and everything south of camp. Everything south of camp. On 510. Which would be? Jonathan? Yeah, that'd be. Yes. No, go ahead. Um, John Wiley, Chestnut Road. 
we want this conversation to result in outcome. And as soon as we have so many people in the room that we have people, both people who are actively directly concerned and some people who are partly audience who haven't come to the, uh, either of the public hearings but are less informed, I think that will lower the likelihood that this discussion will achieve the end that I think you want, which is a handshake, well, lots of handshakes. Okay. <laughs> so I, I would, I, I mean, I understand, I'm, I'm generally in favor of inclusion, but I would limit it to okay. four or five. five and so let's keep Lucy A and the dollar done. They've shown the interest, they've been here uh, at least once. Done. You guys okay with that? Yep. I think the audience is a She's right, so. Okay. All right. Why don't you uh, make a determination as to that's what you want to do? Yeah. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. We've got to get moving. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. All right. And now I'd like to make a motion to open the transfer love license for adult entertainment. It's not a transfer. Okay. It's an application. It's an application. Okay. <laughs> Issuance of entertainment license including new to entertainment to Waitley Investments LLC to be exercised on the premises at 226 State Road in Waitley. Um, I'll let you guys to take the lead on this. this a continuation of the hearing, this public hearing on May, uh, May 30th, 2018. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I think um, at our <clears throat> last, when the hearing was uh, uh, continued, uh, we were all reminded of what the law says. One of the things the law says is that we can ask for more information regarding various things. I have a rather comprehensive list of questions. I don't know that all of them no. can be answered necessarily orally tonight, um, but I think many of them can. And if I would like to get these answers into the public record. Um, so I don't I don't see any hands up. Uh, would it be okay with you, John, if I just start on this Absolutely. list of questions? Yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and some of these may seem rem uh, repetitive of other things, but I just want to make sure things are on the public record. So, um, for the entertainment license, uh, can you s tell me briefly what will the shows you plan to offer consist of? And I don't know whether to address it to. Well, you know, they, the application states there would be new dancing, there would be music. You have the application in front of you. I, and I, I understand. It's, it's everything that's in the application. Okay. Um, are you planning any modifications to the existing stage area? No. no. Um, how many uh, persons will be performing at one time? That has to be determined. Not determined. Uh, what would be the total number of performers for a typical show? It will depend on it will depend on traffic. Um, I would I would between five and ten uh, all over the space of an evening. Um, okay, so. But per show, if somebody performing, it's usually one person is performing at a time, perhaps two. Okay, so five to ten for evening, but one to two at a time. Expected. That, that, that's, that was typical. Okay. Um, what will the seating arrangement layout for the audience area be? As it is. <coughs> how is that laid out now? Just, is that, sure. how, what's the layout now? Well, you should come and visit the premises and see. There are, there are tables around the stage area. There's no, nobody sitting at a bar at the stage area? There is a bar, there's a bar, but it's not the stage area. So you can't see the stage from the bar? You can see the stage from the bar. 
But it's not directly in line. I thought John said, I've seen clubs where there's a stage, there's a bar directly in front of the stage area. That's not the situation. You know, what you, 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 you see movies and TV shows, and, and I'm going off Hollywood. So I'm assuming you're born. And I'm saying that it's not, no, no, it's not, okay. it's not exactly okay. Hollywood and Wesley. I, I, I get it. I'm just asking. You know, there's a bar area, and then there's a stage area next to the bar area. Okay. Got it. Okay. And so the bar area is part of the audience area. You can see, certainly. Okay. Um, there's a bar tender behind the bar. Um, and there's liquor behind the bar. I've gotten to that question yet. Um, what kind of music or other sound effects will be included as part of the show? And what kind of amplifying system uh, will be used? Is the, 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 there's an amplifying system presently. Uh -huh. um, it's usually just music. We've applied to have a DJ also as part of our application. So not live music, if I recall from your application. No, there's nothing about live recorded music. Recorded music. Recorded music, yep. Recorded music. Um, <coughs> and as far as the amplification system, it's this, the same amplification system. Right. I mean, your bylaw says no sound at the street area, at the street. We have to comply with that pretty well. No, I, I, I heard you. Um, so what are your plans for controlling noise in connections with the shows that you'll offer? The same, the same soundproofing that's there now, and no noise emanates from the building. Interesting. Um, will there be any soundproofing measures to contain noise from the performers or patrons within the building? Uh, again, there is no noise outside the building from the patrons and the performers. Okay. We've discussed the smoking area previously and we've okay. indicated that we can make that uh, an area that doesn't emanate noise also. Okay. Um, what are your plans for controlling the noise associated with patrons entering and exiting the premises? There are, there are, if there is noise, then someone from the club will come out and stop it. Okay. Um, we don't have, we don't, there's not an attendant there. Uh, there's no Correct. attendant, but someone is going to be monitoring the noise? Someone monitoring so, it. Um, an employee? An employee. Okay. So you'll have an employee, but they won't be a monitor? No. Um, so an There's employee. just not enough traffic to warrant that. All right. We'll monitor this and could be a smaller in club. the case of, you know, the like, noise of people going in and going out in the parking lot, the employee will monitor and then they said, what would they do? Well, there, just be, there will be an employee who will be from time to time going out in, into the parking area and making sure that there isn't any noise. But there haven't been complaints. No, it's like a, a, a people coming to go. That's uh, patrons entering and No exiting. different from any other restaurant or bar that you go to. There's nobody in the parking area monitoring it. Okay. There, there will be, there will be, we've talked about setting up video cameras. Okay, so you do, you plan to set up video cameras. Do the video cameras um, yes. And yes. also record audio? No. Um, no. No, no. No audio. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cameras uh, are part of the plans, at least for monitoring. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what level of lighting are you planning to use for the entertainment area? Same so level that's in there now. Okay. Um, will the room be darkened for any portion of the show that you're playing? Well, the entertainer, no, it's going to be as it, as it is. Uh, well, as it is now, I don't know if the room is darkened for any portion of the shows. So if you could tell me, does the room, do you plan to have the room darkened? I think at the present time, the plan is to have it 
operate as it has been operated in right. the past. And we don't I know, don't know how it has been operated okay. in the past. So, uh, so my question is, will the, the other areas Not regularly, no. I mean, unless there's any reason to change the lighting. I think right now it stays constant, right? Yeah. The owners yeah. are here, they can probably speak to that. But so, in all, all my visits there, the lighting's never changed. Okay, so there's, uh, the room will, so I can say the room will not be darkened for any portion. No. Not expected. Not expected. Not expected. Yeah. I'm asking for, it's just a question. We can't out. hear you, ma'am. We cannot hear you. Sorry, I'll speak louder. Then. This is the point. We cannot hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you couldn't hear me. So I'll speak louder. Okay. Presently, so, there's no expectation the room will be darkened. Okay. So, uh, we'll not be darkened. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, what is the number of customers you're planning for on each day of the week? 190. How can you plan? Is it 190? Under 90. Oh, is that the capacity? Sorry, yeah, no, the hearing problems are going both ways here. Yeah. <laughs> Not 190. No. Under, under 90, because that's the capacity. Okay. Less than 90. Um, so at any given time. That's the capacity. Time. That's capacity. Right. So you're planning for capacity crowds every day of the week? No, we, we don't know how many people will come. We're saying that we're not going to exceed the capacity uh, set yeah. forth. I didn't actually ask law. how many are coming. How many are you planning for? Well, well, we're not planning plan? for any number because it hasn't begun yet. We're telling you that it won't be, it'll be under 90. That's all we can tell you. We don't know how many people will come. Uh, yeah, but I didn't ask how many will come. How are you planning for that? You, you, you can't plan that, ma'am. You cannot plan okay. that. Okay. I, I, my, I'm just I'm asking the question. Yeah, you can't plan. Because a business plan might count on how many people you there, there have. Is, there is an existing business plan okay. which counts the numbers of these potential customers. Okay. Um, so uh, what are the uh, current customer numbers uh, at the lounge uh, on any given day of the week? During the whole week or per night? Per night. Per night. 120, 130. Oh. Total. No. Because no. 120 is more than the 30. 30. Over 30. the space of the over night, you ran a little bit of open hours. Yeah. You have to go over the space of one. So you, what, I, what I heard was maybe 30? 30. 30. A little 30, yeah. Maybe a little more on the weekends. Approximately 30 per night. Uh, a little more of in there. One day, it's more than the seating. I wish we did. Okay. Alrighty. Um, what kind of uh, advertising are you planning to use for your business? There are no advertising plans at the present time. Uh, you have no advertising plans? No. Um, at the moment. That could change, though. Well, I suppose it could change, but. Um, that I would be surprised if there were advertising, but it could change. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, I think the lounge is, is currently listed in the well, weekend news edition of the paper, but with 85 other establishments <laughs> every week. So, so there, are, there is newspaper advertisement now? Well, it's a listing, Castaway Lounge. And we're not going to advertise any different than any other business. Well, it does, yeah, it's like right, the other business. In the so you can do online advertising. Yeah, there's the interweb, there's all sorts yeah. of things. We're, we're going to be on there for sure. Yeah. Okay, but you don't have a plan for it yet. Correct. You do plan to advertise. The plan hasn't started yet. You do plan to advertise, <coughs> but you don't have the plan for what your advertising is going to be at this point. You plan to advertise. Okay. Um, do you use advanced ticket sales for any of the shows you offer, or do you plan to? Advanced ticket sales. There are no plans for that presently. No plans for uh, if they not. Okay. Um, so, will you have a Massachusetts certified crowd manager? I've never heard of such a term. Well, 
my understanding is, and I could be wrong, is that this is required by the state fire code for nightclubs, dance halls, discotheques, and bars with an occupant load of 100 persons or more. So it's not required, your occupancy is lower. Um, and they must have one designated crowd manager for every 250 occupants. But 95 is pretty close to 100. Management. So that's why the question management. Uh, will you have a Massachusetts certified crowd manager? It's a, number one, it's 90. And number two, the man. It was 95 on the application. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was talking about 90, but you might be right. I don't know what a certified crowd manager is, but if there's some training that the manager goes through to become a certified crowd manager, we'll look into that and report back in the next meeting. Okay. Um, what is your plan for protecting uh, your employees uh, from any rowdy or disruptive conduct by patrons or performers when shows are being presented? Well, if there's, they'll try to calm people down. You're worried about our employees being attacked by customers? Is that um, what you're thinking about? It says yes, uh, from any rowdy or disruptive <coughs> by patrons or performers. Well, uh, the performers are also employees, I suppose. Over the employees. Oh, att attacking. Well, there'll be yeah. people there who would prevent a customer from attacking an entertainer. And if someone attacks <coughs> someone who's working at the bar and they're rowdy and out of hand, they would call the police like in any other establishment. Okay, so your plan is to have people there, to have employees there to handle rowdy or... There's employees which would be specifically there for the purpose of security. So, I mean, you said some... There's a, employees will be there okay. specifically for the purpose of security. In lay terms, like a bouncer. Yeah. In lay terms. Yeah. It, it's never going to get to that point, but they're going to be security staff. <laughs> Um, <coughs> case of uh, rowdy or disruptive content. Um, so um, the next question might have a same or similar answer. What is your plan for protecting patrons from rowdy or disruptive fellow patrons? Or there will be people who are trained in security. Okay. Um, and what is your plan in the event of a fight or argument <laughs> between customers or between customers and employees? Same thing. I mean, there'll be security yeah, people security, there, security, and, and, yeah. and if necessary, the police will be called. Do you know how many security people you plan to have? No less than two. Okay. People trained in security, they're not exclusively security people. Unless they're two people. And we say people trained in security, what is there trained, a, a, a standard that is, well, I, mean, I don't know what the standards are, but is there a standard for training in security? Like I know there's, there's serve safe for bartenders, there's different standards people have for training. Uh, there's for no people. licensing, but there are trainings that people go through on how to deal with disruptive It's an internal training. Okay. All right. Um, what are your plans for protecting patrons and employees from any health, safety, or fire hazards in connection with the shows that you offer? Are there going to be any health, safety, or fire hazards? Fire we know. There'll be no firecrackers or pyrotechnical events. Okay, so there'll be no pyrotechnics. No. Okay. Um, we have exits, ma'am, on the, on the building. That's not the question. I didn't understand the first part. We have exits. Access? Well, one, ex 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 exits. 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 Well, that's, there's that's there's a, actually another question. Is that what you asked? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, I'm asking about health, safety, or fire hazards. There are, and you, there, there's going to be no pyrotechnics. There'll be no pyrotechnics, which just took me a long time to, to spell out. <laughs> 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 okay. 
Um, what is your plan for protecting neighbors and the general public from any disruptive contact conduct at the property in connection with the shows that you'll offer? There's no expectation of having disruptive conduct on the property. I mean, people running it over the neighbors 300 feet away and assaulting them. I'm a little confused. No. The neighbors and the general public from any disruptive conduct. Well, there's going to be no disruptive conduct that we well, know of, and if there's disruptive conduct, someone's going to call the police. Okay. So your your plan sounds like call the police. Sure, call the police. Okay. So you say that if anyone if we see anyone being assaulted, we will call the police. Well, disruptive conduct doesn't necessarily mean assault. I assume it's a more general term than assault. But there are no can disruptive just, choice. Can I just jump in on that? Uh, uh, I don't object. I, go ahead. I'm sorry, but you're, you make an assumption that these things don't happen. I've been there for 22 years. I've had people from that establishment on my property. I've had people walk from this property through the swamp onto my property being chased by the police. I've had people come onto my property, okay, from that location, right? Somebody beaten and bloodied onto my lo so do not assume that this isn't going to happen and just give some sort of smart aleck remark like it's not going to happen and we'll call the police well I mean, it's like not going to happen it's not planned well it sounds like one of the things yeah we're going to call the police and they may run onto the neighbor's property to try to do escape there's nothing else you can do how many times does that happen need more than one Yes. <laughs> do we, I'm just curious, do we have law records on activity that <coughs> passed away, as you guys? Yes. And don't cite data unless you're pretty comfortable knowing exact exact numbers. What are we looking at? <clears throat> Since 2003, when we started recording data in our current record management system, we've had 58 calls. 16 of those were criminal related calls and the rest were non-criminal related calls since 2003 since and, 2003 and were those 16 violent those 16 with violence or other just crime related crime related could be anything yeah. non-crime related well typically like that alarm calls um like the alarm system goes on correct or yeah things like that anything non-crime related and maybe the parking lot. Yeah, maybe maybe noise that doesn't amount to disturbance of the peace because nobody's reporting it to us, nobody's calling us. Okay. Thanks, Bernard. So one promo call on this So let's talk about protecting patrons and employees. What are the plans for protecting Neighbors and the general public from any health, safety, or fire hazards in connection with the shows you offer. There aren't any fire hazards. There are, I can't, and there aren't any health hazards. Nothing comes from the stage to a neighbor's house. I'm just confused by the question. Is. Well, I mean, the law allows us to ask about how you, how, what are your plans for protecting the general public from any health, safety, and fire hazards? So I'm putting the question to you that the law allows me to ask. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm answering it that I'm not, that we're not going to have no pyrotechnics, and so we're not going to create any fire hazards for any neighbors. Um, we're not going to spread any germs outside the premises, which would be a health hazard. Uh -huh. And what was the last one? Safety. Safety. I think we've, been, we've talked about security and aware of any other safety issues. So security within the building would be sufficient, you're saying, to uh, cover neighbors and the general public? Well, I'm saying that there's been 16 criminal calls in 16 years. Well, that's 16 more than came to my house. <laughs> so, I understand that's one yeah. year. Oh, I, 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 I am very familiar with the addition subtraction. Okay, okay, okay. So, Okay. Um, so, what are your plans for controlling customer access to the business? Well, customers walk in one entrance. So, single entrance? Single entrance. So, that, okay. 
So you're going to maintain a single entrance. Um, and what are your plans for preventing access to the premises by unauthorized persons? There is security when you walk in. Um, there's even somebody who's had a trespass order against him. So security personnel will check everyone at the door? Yes. You want to make sure that nobody's drinking is underage. Okay. Um, what are your plans for a situation where the occupancy limit of the building has been reached, but you still have persons waiting outside to enter the building? It will be denied entry. Customer exit points from the building will there be, and where will they be located? So they will be the existing customer exit points. So they to see how many of those are there. How many, how many exits are there? Three. Three. There are three exits. Um, and how will we know there won't be entry from the two that are not entrance points? You can't enter from the outside. The doors don't open from the outside. But, but doors can be opened from the inside and people can come in. There will be people who are working there who will There will be people that. stationed at those two doors. People can see the doors who are working at the bar and other places. People will be able to visually see that. Okay, so if someone comes in a door that's not an entrance door, you'll have employees specifically looking for that. Yes. Can, can you access the smoking area from anywhere but inside the building? No. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, so, okay. You explain the travel paths for situations where patrons and employees have to leave the building on account of a fire or other emergency. So well, there are three exit doors. Okay, that the exit door is not a really a travel path. Well, there's nothing. There, there are. There, it's a very small establishment. You can see the exit doors, and from wherever you are, there's nothing that would block you from getting out of the building. Okay. Going where you would walk. So any of those three doors can be reached from <coughs> the, the main room. I, I, I said I've not been in there, so sure. I don't really I mean, know what it's these true. You can walk. You can, they're not blocked in any way. It's not like an exit door is behind a locked door. Okay. So they're all in, in like the main room. There, are, there are um, there's a there are there are two rooms, and they're either in they're in one of those two rooms. So the three exits are split between two rooms. Two large rooms. So they have OSHA training. Okay. So, the exit the doors. So paths themselves are not particularly laid out, but emergency lighting presumably exists for a little power outage. That might be an emergency that might require. I'm still in love with that problem. They do make an emergency panic bar that make they're audible, and they can only be turned off with a key. Okay. I yeah, I don't know that the town of Wheatley made me do that for my apartment. Okay. Okay. I, it has a key in order to get to stop the alarm when you go out the door. And each employee will go through OSHA training. You can have them put those on. Each employee goes through OSHA. I'm asking these questions of the people who are making the plans. OSHA here. makes plans. They don't um, make plans. And so I'm, but I'm just the building the inspector makes these plans. But you're, you're acting, acting ridiculous, of, Joyce. You're acting silly up there. Well, well stop. You know what? That, that, we're not going to criticize anyone for the role they're playing in this. No. We're, we're just not going to do it. Joyce is going to be comfortable with everybody in the audience, and the audience is going to be comfortable with whatever happens here. That's the rule. It's OSHA. It's not That's it's the OSHA. rule. Go ahead, Joyce. Okay, thank you. Um, so the, the town's uh, adult establishments bylaw requires a uh, police detail with uh, at least one officer when entertainment is scheduled 
at the premises with the liquor license. So what are your plans for police details in connection with the shows that you'll offer? We plan to comply with the Waverly bylaws. Can you be more specific? Well, the Waverly bylaws are pretty specific. I ask you to be respectful, please. Um, well, that, I, that doesn't happen? sound like a plan. No. I plan to comply. I mean, do you have any thought through how that's going to work? No, we'll either, we'll either have an officer there or ask for a variance. Put your bylaws allow. <sighs> okay, so the plan is to have an officer there. Or ask for a um, variance. And no. There's never been one there. Is this for police de detail inside? Yes. No. What, what case no. would that ever happen? Whenever you have entertainment. No. no. There will never, there will not be a police officer. No. This is an entertainment license. We have entertainment every hour we're open. No, but, yes, but the, the, the bylaw requires a police detail of at least one officer when entertainment is scheduled at the premises with the liquor license. That can't be. Let me, just, let me just say that for the four to 35 or 38 years that it's been operated, there's never been a police officer signed on duty inside every, the premises. Every entertainment license I own, I don't have a police officer on duty at any point, much less every hour we're open. Well, when you came here two weeks ago, you told us you've never run this kind of business before. Yep, but I own liquor licenses. I own I mean, entertainment this, licenses. This is an adult entertainment license. We get it's town um, council. And it's, it's the bylaw and uh, it's that that's that's what the bylaw is. The town bylaw and says the officer has to be there every hour, just for every in perpetuity. hour when you have entertainment. Adult entertainment. Adult entertainment. Certain yeah. certain entertainment. Yeah. Certain yeah. entertainment. Right. Yeah. That's a big difference. Huge difference. Not during entertainment. During yeah. certain entertainment. Oh, yeah, I, I left the word certain out, but that, that's, I mean, that's, 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 that's an important word. No, I, no that's I'm a crux. Sorry, I was referring yeah. to the bylaw, so what's in the bylaw states. If I put everything We're here to be bylaw. fair, but so, I'm if sorry, it's not, if it's, sorry for no, me. you know that that sorry word turns the conversation. Oh, okay. If that word turns, so it's certain entertainment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, would I just. There hasn't been a police officer. I want to make sure on the public record that you're aware of this bylaw and that you said you plan to comply with the bylaw by having an officer present and possibly asking for a variance. Um, well, if, if you're saying that it's a, it's a requirement of the town of Wheatley to operate, we're not going to be operating illegally. I'll read, yes, I'll read yes. chapter verse here. And, and again, I'm just reading from the, from the town bylaws. Section 62A, police officer can be on duty and premises offer a certain entertainment. At least one police officer shall be on duty when any entertainment is scheduled at a premises with a liquor license. The police officer shall be approved by the chief of police of Waitley. Upon notice in writing by the selectman, additional officers shall be employed by the licensee. Unless otherwise notified by the Board of Selectmen, a licensee need not employ a police officer to be present if the, only, if the only entertainment is a band, vocalist, instrumentalist, or operation of a jukebox. What about a TV? Oh. Sorry? TV. I wouldn't consider that entertainment as my guess, but I didn't write the bylaw. Is there a copy of the Wadden on Wednesdays? <clears throat> It, no, there's certain there entertainment. Oh. And there's no alcohol. It says any entertainment. The, the bylaw does say any entertainment. And 6219 says you can have a variance if in fact the public safety and order will be maintained without an officer. I'll bring your own. You don't need to turn the entertainment's back. But, but you told me that you plan to comply by either having an officer present or by asking for a variance. I'm and saying, I don't know about the I'm saying that if, you, if you're saying that we have to have an officer there, then and you're going to shut us down, we'll, we'll face that when we come to it. 
Okay, so um, what are your plans for hiring employees? I've heard about security already. Do you, do you have plans for hiring employees? There's no formal plan for how many employees are going to be hired. Okay. Uh, what type of training will be given to employees before they begin working in your business? If they're serving alcohol, they'll be TIP certified. Okay, TIP certified. Any other? Whatever training is usual in the, in the restaurant. That doesn't sound like yeah, okay. Uh, They rest And you said earlier security personnel will have training? I did say that they would be trained by the owners. So security personnel trained by owners. Okay. Um, so the, the, the other, the next question was kind of anticipated. Do you plan to hire any staff who will be employed only for security or safety purposes? It sounds like the answer to that is yes. I did not know. It's not true. That's not That's true. That's people who will be trained for security, and they're not going to be exclusively security at the public oh, okay. time. So they won't be exclusively security, but there will be people. They may be doing other things in addition Correct. to security. Okay, so not exclusively. Yeah. And thanking everyone for your patience, but they really wanted to get as much of this in the public record as, as completely possible. Uh, what is the number of on-duty staff you're planning for on, on like a day-by-day? -day? Hasn't been decided. It's not decided. Um, and you may have addressed this earlier. Will there be a parking lot monitor or attendant? No. Okay. Um, are you expecting or planning for any patrons to arrive by walking or another means not involving an automobile? No. Okay. Uh, what's the vehicle capacity of the parking lot that came up earlier? Um, like Somewhere in the neighborhood of 60. I don't know the exact so, uh, something It's over 50. Of over of order 60, and that may end up getting hashed out with new <coughs> parking lot regulations. Um, what's the current usage level for the parking lot by number of vehicles per day of the week? Do you have Sorry, an estimate for that? The number of uh, vehicles per day. Nobody knows. Nobody, Nobody knows. Do you have an, uh, an estimate for that? What's the question? The question is about how many vehicles per day in your parking lot? During the course of the day? Yeah. 25. Something like 25. Um, <coughs> what are your plans for controlling access to the parking lot mm -hmm. and uh, for parking of vehicles in the lot? You drive in their entrances and exits to the parking lot from the two roads, Route 5 and 10 and from. Okay, so you're not going like, to control it off of Route 5 or, or no. off of Christian Lane? No. So no plans? Not going to be any one way. So. Okay. Um, are you planning for or anticipating any shows where the number of vehicles might exceed the number of parking spaces in the parking lot? No. Okay. All right. That is the end of the questions I prepared. I'd like to. No, it's just a couple. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to know: is, is anyone doing minutes of this meeting? Yes. Okay, and what you had written down, it, can someone else get a copy of what you wrote so that your little changes aren't in, in there? Okay? Uh, yeah, I, I, How do we know that when you come back with a, with a book uh, that you didn't change things around? Well, this is what I wrote. What would make you happy? A copy of that to their attorney. 
of what you wrote. It's, it's, it's all recorded as well. So That's not recorded to, except for what you have in your hand. Oh, no, I'm, I'm the TV camera. We, we can't take pictures of this, you know, we can't, we'd oh, like, no, I'd like to see a copy of no, that. Wait, 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 wait. I'm happy to provide it, but Thank you. there is a public record. Thank so, you. Yeah. That is also. Yeah. I, I, um, I've got a couple questions, and you'll forgive me if I'm going to assume we're all adults here. I am wondering about treatment of employees. I'm wondering about how we can make sure with a written plan that certain illegal activities do not take place at or are, or the establishment is a catalyst for certain activities. Um, some people may say, well, that would never happen. Well. Adult entertainment establishments probably have a higher propensity for certain activities than, let's say, the Waitley Inn. So again, let's all be adults here and understand that I, as a board member, want a, a written policy on how the new ownership will work to make sure that there is no uh, drug trafficking taking place in the establishment. I, as a board member, want a written policy to make sure that there isn't extra cash being made by certain individuals at other places off premises. I want to make sure that the dancers the entertainers are given absolute and total respect as employees and that there will be no harassment of those employees by either other employees or customers. I don't think personally that's if, if, if you want the town to accept your promise guarantee statement that this entertainment license will be given without any adverse public health impact to patrons, employees, etc. That I think it's fair to see a written policy as to how you prevent sexual harassment in the workplace by people who, by the way, are dancing nude. So please don't tell me that that might not happen. I want to make sure that it doesn't happen. And so I think it's fair to ask that a written policy be created to make sure that, that doesn't happen, to make a written policy that demonstrates how we will not have the rumor mill, and it is strong, it may not be accurate always, and I am not claiming accuracy, that extra money is made at other hotels in the area from relationships that were begun in the establishment. I want to make sure that the public health is not adversely affected. If we can get a written statement about that, about you guys playing, and, and trust me, I, I, I respect your attorney a lot. I've come to respect you guys as what I see as, as pretty straight shooters. But I think because you've never run this type of establishment before, I think it's a fair request to ask that before we approve this license, we get a real comprehensive plan as to how these things are going to be prevented. And I'm not saying it's a, it's a th that list I just cited is an exhaustive list, but it's a start, and it's and, and it's serious, especially in this generation. You're saying, John, and you are assuming and you're assuming absolutely incorrectly in opposition to all the studies that have been done that there will be increased criminal activity around this particular club. I didn't say increased. There will be criminal activity <coughs> at this club in contrast to 
it, it being a, a restaurant, or there will be criminal activity there. There will be a no drug use on the premises policy. There will be an employee sexual harassment policy as you would have with any business. Okay. okay. And there I is nothing that you're going to be able or anyone is capable of providing to you, which is if two people meet at the club who are customers and go off to a motel, that the business is going to be able to prevent. Okay? There, there, there will be a policy of, that, um, that um, in employees, that dancers, performers, will not engage in prostitution, call it what it is, yeah. okay, with customers. But there's nothing else that can be done. And you and want something that's incredibly comprehensive, <coughs> you're not going to get it. And, and I'm saying that before we approve a license, is it, is it so far removed from fair to ask to see the policy so that we can, we can to the best of our ability, be comfortable with the, the implementation being applied correctly. That's all I'm asking. We will, we will give you some policy, but you're misconstruing and misunderstanding, and I think you should talk to council about the entertainment statute, 183A, because it says you shall grant a license unless there's a factual basis for not granting the license. And I understand that, and I, I truly understand that. But you're suggesting things may happen, and we're supposed to give you some comprehensive policy, in your words, that's going to prevent anything untoward, anything criminal happening. That's not our burden. But we will give you a policy. Okay, and, and I guess what the reason, one of the reasons I'm asking for it is to How do I want to put this? If we see a policy and we start to get reports, this, this is to, 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 to create almost a partnership to make sure that, that we minimize or eliminate to the extent possible the propensity of th these things happening so that we don't have to call up and say, geez, this has happened. We need to, to take X, Y, or Z action. This has happened again. We need to take X, Y, or Z action. I don't want that to happen. Well, so a policy is not going to perfect any of that, but we will give you a It'll policy. minimize it, potentially. Well, is, is all this, I'm going to ask our, attor our attorney here, is what Jonathan is asking for, is that covered in Section 183A? The question relates to the activity at the premises, which would implicate public health, safety, or order in some way, in my opinion. I think the questions are appropriate. The statute allows the board to inquire of an applicant with respect to additional information. Council has stated that policies will be prevented, so you can review that. I think it was a fair question. Okay. Well, it, it, it also comes down to, I mean, you can have write policies all day long, but of it's, a matter, it's a matter of, of implementing them and, and uh, following them, I, I that's, guess. That's absolutely true of any, right. absolutely, okay. no question. Yeah. Okay. Other public comments? I have a question. Yes, state your name and address. Susan Barron, 120 North Street. My question <coughs> relates to what we were just discussing in terms of policies. You know, as you were saying, Fred, if there are policies but they're not being implemented, <coughs> what, you know, what's it worth? If there are problems, if the things that the policies are supposed to be preventing are happening anyway, what is the recourse? Can the town revoke the license? Well, I, think, I, I think the regulations require that option in there, right? The statute provides a hearing with notice to consider revocation or some other suspension. temporary suspension what what have you and and that can be escalating or de-escalating or just like any any public policy you know three traffic tickets are worse than one traffic ticket 
Okay. So I think it would be in their best interest to comply because they're investing. That's sort of what I'm getting at. Right, right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. I think I have a few questions for our town council, I guess. The, the uh, application to for the for the uh, liquor license entertainment is by a party that does not own the property today. Now, do before if whatever action we take, uh, does that sale of that property have to commence and a, and a record of deed transfer before a license is effective? No. An applicant does not need to own the premises at which a license is exercised. It can be leased or any other kind of property interest. So there would be two licenses well, at some point in no, time? No, no. There's only one license. But if, okay, today there is one, and if, say, we do grant another one, but the property hasn't sold yet or deed transfer, you, you've got an overlap. The, the, the alcohol license is singular. That would be transferred. There can only be one alcohol license at the premises. Okay. And the typical course is the parties to the transaction will have their purchase agreement. And when you vote your approval, any board that votes in approval, if it's voted, needs to then be transmitted to the ABCC for the administrative process. The entertainment license is a new license. And there would be on the record, I'm going to suggest and presume, a point at which the license is being exercised by current license holder, and then that will cease at the point in time when the owners, buyers, would take over if, if that's how it occurs. You wouldn't have two licenses. Two licenses. Once, no. okay. So if, if a grant, a license, an entertainment license is granted, then that necessarily means the previous owner's license is ended. Oh, you would need to address the time at which the license will take effect. Okay. And that is probably that also so a that's question that the applicants can provide information <coughs> on. Okay. And, and, and follow up with the attorney. Uh, the time period for any any license is assuming we, we, we act on it with conditions or whatever, is that only good until the end of this year? Or does it go from a one year the, time period? Well, all alcohol licenses are renewable annually. You have to submit okay. your renewal application in the month or no later than November 30th. And the statute essentially provides for a renewal as a matter of course. All right. The entertainment license also gets renewed annually, but it's not a hearing process. So both of these would be for six months or less or period. Whatever is left yes, on the license less, period, yes. On this period. Okay, so then at that time, if conditions, uh, it, <coughs> if we have uh, issues with, with the license, I mean, in six months, we can we can have another uh, hearing and, and ask for more information if we want, or. You can or always ask, you can always ask. The license holder time. for information, right. but if you feel a, a I would say disciplinary hearing or investigation hearing is required. You can do that uh, with notice to the license holder. Right. Okay. Are you good? Yeah. Okay. okay. I just had a quick question because I thought I read today what you stated about the liquor licenses all expire December 31st, so mm -hmm. they have to be renewed annually. But I thought that I read that the entertainment license is actually two year, and that may not be no, correct. It's not a two year license. Okay. Okay. Um, is there a process uh, on the transfer of deed where the building inspector goes through and identifies any kind of health or uh, safety codes uh, as part of the process of, you know, all, everything we've heard is about the inside of the building has been through word of mouth. Uh, is, is there, is there a part of the transfer of deed uh, a requirement to have a building inspection and a health code inspection? Either of you guys? The, the property sale itself does not require that. It may be the case that, as a matter of course, an inspector would want to view because there is going to be a certificate of occupancy issue. One of the things that you could do is to ask if you yourself or this group that's going to meet to view the premises. But you could certainly you could do that individually. You don't have to do that. 
And I would defer to whatever the local practice of the building inspector is, which I don't know regarding any code compliance inspection. Uh, most of that may come up if you issue a, uh, he issues a, a permit to do improvements, whatever is required, then he may look at the rest of the building or the parcels. So. There may be a need to right. Other questions? Um, this is where I'm going to look to you guys again because for, for proper course of action, so I do things right here. Um, I, I think that we need to continue this hearing. Um, I, 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 I do think that, and I'm biased, I'm speaking for me personally, that some type of written plan, <coughs> business model, what have you, on ensuring to the best of your ability, and I understand there's nothing guaranteed in life, that the entertainers won't be sexually harassed, that you have at least a plan, I thought, around how to how to prevent illegal activities from taking place on premises or as a, a as a genesis from what has taken place on premises. Um, I, I think that's gonna be helpful because I think that will give us a sense of what you guys, if you were granted the license, are doing right and what you need to work on to make sure, again, the public health is 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 adhered to. Um, I'm not saying it to, to say, because I'm looking for a reason to kill this thing. I'm saying it because we need to know what your plan is so that we can follow along its logical path so we can in, ensure that, again, public health and safety is being adhered to and followed. So I, that that's my request. Um, to see that plan before this board were to make a decision at its next planned hearing, which could be another <coughs> long night if it's at the same night as the alcohol license. Yes. And I apologize for that in advance. But that information has to be presented at a public meeting. Correct? Yeah. The plan that you're talking about would be evidence before this board, so you would receive they it. It would be submitted in, in advance, but right, right. Would, if you for us to read and to discuss, you would do that. Yes, would be at the meeting. Right, yeah. right. And then we do our homework ahead of time. Yeah. I don't know if I cut you off. No, uh, no, I was, I, I was, I, there were so many questions that, so do you have a plan for, but the answer came back, no, we don't have a plan, or that's not going to happen. And Joyce, can I break in for a second? And what I'm going to suggest, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm personally vested in the pieces that I mentioned. But what I'm going to suggest is that as part of the plan that's drafted, that you guys, will, we have, we're, we're going to give you guys a copy of, of, of the tape. Joyce has offered to give copies of, of her notes. So you guys incorporate whatever you want to. but. Again, I'm going to suggest that the more you incorporate, it, it probably is a good idea. That, that's, I'm just throwing it out there as, as unsolicited advice. Thank you, John. Okay. Um, I would like to make a motion, unless there are other public comments, to continue this hearing until 8.30? 8 o'clock? No, 7.45. The first one's 7.30. Continue the alcohol license and transfer here yeah. to seven thirty. It's We're now two and a half two hours and twenty minutes in. Yeah. It's a it's a somewhat arbitrary start time for the second one because yes. it won't yeah. really start till the first one. Let, let's say let's say eight o'clock. We could start earlier if if we got through the first one in, in due course. Well, I thought we already just decided on 7.30. That's for the alcohol, and we have to do this one for the alcohol. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I, I have a question for council. Is it possible to run public hearings concurrently? In a way, you have done that, but you need to act separately on each application. So you should, in my view, continue this to a time that is different from and after the okay. time. I'm going to suggest 7.45. On Wednesday, the 27th, at Whaley Elementary School on Long Plain Road. For the entertainment license. For the entertainment license. 15 minutes? Okay. Second. Wait, we have to, do we have to get out of 
the hearing first? You can simply announce that you will continue with the alcohol proceeding until that's finished and then get to. It's the same as any other item okay. on the agenda if you okay. need more time. So motion to continue to the 27th at 7.45 uh, to take up the, at, uh, I'm sorry? At the at Whaley Elementary School to take up the adult entertainment license. A second. Um, you're, the, you're the chair. Now. I know. You have to I know. The, uh, um, <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Moving on the agenda. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for coming. I encourage you to stick around for the rest of this meeting. Yeah. All right. Um, Jim, I apologize that we're that we're late. Yeah, that's right. Late night. Just conversations to be continued outside. Yeah. Can conversations be continued outside the room, please? Okay. Yeah. Could conversations continue outside the room, please? Um, Jim, in light of the time it is, we're going to ask for this to be um, as quick as possible. 30 seconds. Okay. What do we got? I am seeking the appointment of Elizabeth United as a part time police officer for the town of Whaley. Um, I'm sorry. Can you take that out? Can you take that outside? Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Catch up tomorrow, unless you want to stay. Is Brian going to be in touch? That's He's going to be in touch within seven within forty eight hours. Okay. Thank you. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, Elizabeth, you nice. Do we have a resume? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would also add to that yes. that that's contingent upon um, the successful, positive pre-employment screening through physical and drug screening. Just to make sure all that goes through. Um, I, I don't see, I, I'm not going to take time here to shop through this video for a resume. You're comfortable with her? Absolutely. Yeah. Background? I got you. Solid. Resume that would cut emails to us. Yeah. Does she have experience? She does. Yeah, she's currently, um, she's currently a part-time police officer for the town of Deerfield. She's been so for a little over a year, I believe. And she also works for Deerfield Academy. It's Deerfield Academy campus here. So she has experience dealing with people, um, children, you know, school-age children, as well as um, you know, members of the community. So that's, that's not on the resume. Right? Yeah. Really good to say. Okay. Yes, this, this resume was one of her older resumes. Yeah. Okay. I've got no problem with this. Yeah. You've done your due diligence. I'm yes. great. Okay. Make a motion we appoint Mr. United. Yes. This is John. Or, uh, oh, yes, part time officer. Subject to what you say? Subject, Subject to, to uh, physical, physical drug yes. test and uh, pre employment screening, pre -employment physical screening, screening yeah. and um, drug test. Okay, okay. okay. motion. Second. Okay, and you have all to say all in favor. I, I run a loose ship, <laughs> except when it's stuff like that. Um, are we good? Yes, we're good. Okay, we're good. Thank you. All right. Um, I sell the car. Part, oh yeah, second part. part. Two thousand nine Chevy Impala. Two thousand fifty dollars. Two thousand fifty dollars. bid. It's sold or it's on the. It. It's been on. That is the bid. That is the okay. winning bid. That is the winning bid. Take it or. I will take, take it. Take it. Okay. I move that we accept the bid for two thousand fifty dollars. Yeah. 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 Second. Okay. Right. 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 Good. Right. We're good. Yeah. One thing left, you know. Sure. Yeah. Yes, you may. Um, just as far as the funding, where that that um, two thousand fifty dollars is going to go. Is it two hundred fifty or two thousand? Two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. Two hundred five hundred. Yeah. So is that is that funding just going to go directly to the general fund, or is that is there I mean, a possibility? The wherever the law says is it goes. Is there a possibility to? I will put that somewhere else. 
Just a question. I'm not sure it can. What, what do we do with other vehicles sold? Usually, goes, they, usually it, I think it usually comes through as miscellaneous revenue, so it goes to the, the general fund. fund. No, no, that's where it's gone. Yeah, the last two that we had. Right. I just just yeah. posing the question didn't know if that's something yeah. we could transfer into the cruiser account. Yeah, no. It, well, it, it's a fair question for town meeting next time around. As a re and, and it would be good to remind that hey, you can put in there. But I would encourage you to drive that ship. Yep, absolutely. Okay. My ship's sinking, so <laughs> your ship is sinking. It's got a lot of weight. Feels oh, yeah. like it. All right, uh, you're good. Good. All right, thanks, Jim. Uh, I do not see Jim Ross in the house. I talked to Jim earlier. We can, I can, uh, we can talk about what, what, what he really wants to talk about. Uh, and that is, there's a, in, in planning for the, if you look at the back of the packet, in, in planning for the, the Veterans Monument there. Uh, is that the back of the packet? Yeah. Last pages. There's a concern with it. Uh, there's a concern with one of the, I think it's a maple tree. It's closest to the sidewalk and the town away from the street and the town hall. Um, and there's a lot of surface roots there. And <coughs> I know, I think. Uh, Jim had an arborist look at it and said it's, it's not the healthiest tree, but I'll defer to our tree warden as to what he thinks about that. But um, what they were thinking was that if the if, if the tree was removed, it would make planning for that space, um, it would open up a lot more options. Um, preliminary discussions have been about some type of surface papers or something like that, which would not be possible with with how the roots are now. Well, in but terms of infrastructure to, to put the thing together. Is that the tree that's right next to the flag pole? It's the one that the band sits under during the, that's a beautiful that tree. That was gonna be the, my next question was, is that the tree that the band? Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful tree. Stands on. Is there another tree that the band could stand on? Because it's getting redesigned. It just might be it's a different I, tree. I do believe they are planning on, I haven't seen their their plan, but as I believe they were going to have some type of plantings there. I don't know how long they'll. Okay, I thought they were. Um, again, sir, as Brian said, the the tree itself has some structural deficiencies. However, left the way it is, it would. I I don't see it dying anytime soon or being a hazard to to anything serious hazard. However, to do any work in the area, the, the roots are, you yeah, walk through right. there and the roots are right there. So to try to excavate any, any of the material around it will definitely be detrimental to the tree. Um, my suggestion would be at the, the next time that I'm looking at doing a tree hearing, which I have a list that I'm gathering now, I could put that one on the on the list and have it have it at the public hearing. And if there's any any butters, anybody that objects to it, then we can discuss it at that point in time, go through the process. But and if there is nobody there for objection, then then it it can be removed. But the plan is to move the monument closer to the sidewalk there, I guess. They don't, yes. they don't have any final plans. <coughs> but to move it away, away from the road to get further back. So. Yes, and also be able to, again, I, if they don't have a final plan, I, right. There's a sketches, but I just don't. know that one of the comments they made to me was they wanted to be able to be able to view the, the valley, the, have more of a scenic view at the same point in time. Right, one of the ideas. So they don't want to replace it with another tree that's going to be that size in 200 years. Not in the same location, though. Right. They, they would want to, and this is all still preliminary. There, there's been no, these are just two sketches that they had a, land, a landscape and company do. Again, start thinking about how the space would be utilized. But the, the two ideas that they got were that the, the monuments, how many of the monuments there are, um, probably more than one, would have the backdrop of the 
they'd be oriented so that the person would be standing their back to Chestnut Plain Road and looking that way with the valley so as the backdrop. This, that, this one, that one's oriented a little bit wrong. The sketch plan is oriented a little bit wrong. Because oh, okay. that would actually be facing the town hall if I... Right, I think well, so. Yeah, okay, so it's going to be facing this way out towards the valley. And, and that's not on the neighbor's property, that's on our no, property? It's in the it, town layout. It's in the town layout? Yeah. Yeah. Anything it's, on Chestnut Plain side of the sidewalk is town property. And it's inside it's, the right, right, yeah. In their frontage. Yeah. But in the town layout. Have we talked with her? I have not. I think that that Jim would Ross be... has said that he has, he has talked with her. Any any type of design that goes forward will involve <coughs> the butters, for sure. I, I just think that a, a tree like that oftentimes has a lot of sentimental value to, even if it's not on your layout, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't have a conversation. Very remiss. To make sure that she's that she's okay right. with that. And that's why the very least needs to have yeah, okay. But it sounds like they really just need to come back with a, what they're recommending as a final design. Yeah, like if why, this changes. I don't know why should we really be talking about it now if yeah. okay. they yeah. move it around a little bit. And it's, yeah. Right. yeah, but yeah, I don't feel like we're in a position. Okay, so why don't we agree that Keith is going to put it on? His agenda, or whatever you call it. I'll put it in a he hearing when I feel it's when it's timely. When there's Great. A plan, when there's I mean, a and, and who, their plan may change. Who knows? That's why I'm saying. Be. So I don't need to stir up a hornet's nest if there is no need to. Great. And okay. if I go, so if we go there now, you're saying it's not the tree that's closest to the flagpole. It's the next um, tree over. Is that? Because when I go and look, I, just, right. I can't remember. Yes, it, it's right. closest to the sidewalk in the town hall. That's the same tree. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that is, it yeah. is that one. It's a ginormous tree. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think we're good. Okay. Seven forty-five, Lori. Hi. Hi. Hello. Sorry about the delay. Oh, I'm sure you didn't sign up for this, yeah. but what do we got? <laughs> Um, so, um, Lori Scarborough, uh, Transportation Planning Engineer with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Um, the town has engaged the FERCOG to develop a complete streets prioritization plan. Um, I sent Brian the materials ahead of time. You have, you have the hard copies yeah. there, great. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll try and be quick. Um, briefly, um, Massachusetts has implemented a complete streets program that towns can use to apply for funding to um, accomplish complete streets projects. Complete streets projects um, are projects that uh, provide or improve safe accommodation for all users in the traveled ways. Um, it, in practice, that means uh, providing accommodations for bicycles, pedestrians, and transit where appropriate. Um, Complete Streets is uh, context sensitive, so it, it's not always about you know putting sidewalks on every rural roadway or you know bus lanes where they don't belong, that kind of thing. It it really is um, sensitive to the the actual context of the town. Um, the MassDOT program um, provides for up to four hundred thousand dollars per year for construction. Of of complete streets projects. Um, uh, the program is implemented in three phases or tiers. The first phase um, is for the town to adopt a complete streets policy, which Waitley has. The second phase is for the town to develop a prioritized list of projects. That, that's what um, the FERCOG is working on now. Um, with the board's approval of the prioritization plan, the town is then eligible for phase three, which is applying for the construction funding, and that that's accomplished on an annual basis. Um, you can apply for up to $400,000 per fiscal year. Um, a complete streets prioritization plan should reflect the town's priorities, um, and it should be a comprehensive five-year plan. So to develop the plan, um, myself and my colleagues um, review, first reviewed existing um, town plans, master plan, uh, open space plans, any other sort of um, analysis or um, audit uh, that had been done previously. Um, we conducted thorough field um, field visits and, and recorded our observations, and we've uh, been meeting with a committee that was uh, organized by Brian. Um, we've met, I think, four or five times. Um, and 
Uh, and with their input, uh, we developed the, the list of projects that you see in this spreadsheet, and it's also detailed in the uh, report. Um, and we brought that to a public input meeting at the end of last month, I think it was. Um, and we received some good comments there um, and incorporated those into the, the current iteration of the plan that you have in, in front of you. Um, since that meeting, we had uh, that public meeting, we had one final um, committee meeting a couple days ago um, where we had a few more comments. Those have been incorporated. And so what uh, you have now um, is what we believe is, is the final plan. Um, we're hoping uh, to submit that um, with your approval as soon as possible. Um, there is a deadline of September 1st for the plan to be submitted and approved in order to apply for the next round of Tier 3 funding, which is October 1st. But we'd like to get it in um, as soon as possible so MassDOT can review it. They, they say to expect about three weeks for a review, and uh, if they come back with comments, that will give us plenty of time to address those comments before the beginning of September. Um, so, as you see, we have a list of, I believe, 22 projects um, that, we've, that we feel is comprehensive. They're prioritized um, based um, on existing plans, which highlighted the historic town center sidewalk, sidewalks as a very high priority. Uh, following that, projects that affect safety and access for the elementary school and for uh, kids in town in general. Um, we're also given a priority, and uh, with input uh, traffic calming projects around the town, we're also prioritized. And we feel that there's a good mix of projects that touch on uh, different areas of the town. Um, I can go through the, pro the list of projects in, in detail. You, you, um, hopefully, you've had a chance to review it. So, in, in, in the interest of time, I, I could just address any questions that you have. The next step. Um, would be for, for the board to approve the plan. I, I just have a question about the um, the, the walking path uh, from Christian Lane to the elementary school. Mm -hmm. There are a handful, if not more, a few more um, <coughs> houses to the north of the elementary school on Long Plain Road. Yeah. And I'm wondering whether it was discussed whether a sidewalk could continue so that students who live on both sides of the elementary school could now walk to school as opposed to, I mean, we literally have people who take the bus in a very short distance. Yeah. And, I, and I just think that perhaps the comfort level of families would be greater if that sidewalk, if, if part of the plan might be considered to have that sidewalk extend a little bit to the north of the elementary school. That was discussed by the committee, um, and we came away with the sense that there weren't two that that didn't um, uh, reach very many residences that had school children. I yeah, understanding that's, that that's a snapshot of time. Absolutely, we don't know when school children will be living there in the future. Mm -hmm. And I just you know let's plan appropriately if that's one of the projects that we ultimately adopt. I, I just wonder whether we should be planning for the future as opposed to not just the current. Okay. I, I need to come in one of your meetings about the uh, a connection from the school to Christian Lane on the, uh, the right away easement the town owns for water and, and gas. Has that been looked at? Um, we, we reworded it, didn't we? To, yeah, we yeah. changed the way the project we is changed described the wording on it. Uh, to say it would be actually specifically set its path either along the roadway or upon the easement. We haven't clarified whether which, it would be possible. That? Uh, it's number three. Oh. <clears throat> it's That really comes down to For town easement. Okay, I see. the very principle of the easement, whether it's even allowed. Right, okay. okay. Yeah. If it's just a utility easement, I don't. You wouldn't be able to do it well, unless it's changed or some other agreement is made. Yeah. Uh, go right by the marijuana greenhouse. Yeah, right. Now. Can't get a view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because um, there, there is a. We just thought let's let's make the wording a little more vague so that when we have figured out what's the right path, we can it fits uh, in that. In that description, but it's a lot shorter than, than oh, going yeah. down the road here, down through the dip, and around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, it's yeah, I would recommend.
recommend sorting that out sooner yeah. rather than later. Um, I because I won't be surprised if MassDOT comes back with a comment about specifically why that that description is is vague or not. Yeah. not so that specific. That probably should start right here. Have Brian research the the yeah. deed that the town signed. Uh, or the assessors, somebody here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody's got to look to see what the deed says. But, but the other, or the easement. Yeah, that, that, at the start, but also you got to look at, at the cost. I mean, of the, of the two alternatives, it may be a, a lot cheaper going through a, a field than, than going a mile around and uh -huh. reconstructing yeah. the, yeah. And it, and the it road does, and yeah. also. And it comes down to what I think the weakness of the program is, is that it does not include funds for engineering. Right. And taking that sidewalk along Long Plain Road all the way to Christian Lane would require, my guess, more engineering costs than construction costs. It just seems right. so. So it, uh, I think taking a creative look at alternative paths is right. probably to our best interest. Yeah, it's, I don't it's know if it's worth looking at. Uh, but but to, but that's that's the other thing to, that we have to keep in mind here is that. Uh, we have to find other fun other ways to fund the engineering of these things. Right. You can't ask for seventy five thousand for engineering and then, you know, the next time around ask for construction. It's all construction well, money. So, so we right. so that they, it sounds like really great. Oh great, we get four hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, but and, and that's the that's the the yeah but. Okay, so we'd have to so, hire an, an engineer to do a, a design on yeah. um, any of these. Uh, right, any on of these. any of them, but some will be more expensive than others to do the engineering. So yeah. we'd have to come up, say, to town meeting vote or special. We'd have to, vote yeah, to do that. either appropriate or find. Uh, I don't know if there are grants out there for engineering costs. Okay. Yeah, typically, um, just the rule of thumb, engineering cost is about 10% of the construction cost. Um, just as a rule. Okay, great. What else? Anything else? Um, Anything else? That's it. Okay. Well, we're going to read up and. Uh, I, 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 I was going to move to, to uh, actually, I think we're going to move so I've got lots of time to look at it and then put my input in. But if you want more time, then no, I, I, I'll, could I will we take trust this on the, uh, if we, we can put this on the next meeting. I will trust your judgment. Well. If, if all the comments brought up at the meeting been considered yes. some way or other? Yes, yes, yes. And especially the, the, the one you made about the path, I yeah. thought that was actually. Have included um, the solar powered radar speed feedback signs uh, as a project. Okay. Those are the two, Those are the two big things. Things. Yeah. So what would you move? I would move that we approve this complete street plan and get it in the pipeline. Yeah. For the next so step so three. That we, yeah, that's the yeah. next step is we approve it and then you submit it. Fred, right. you want to second that? Right, I'll Aye. second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, we're done. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. All right, Chapter 90, Project Requests. Any update? Um, I have a Chapter 90 project request for um, the chip ceiling. We're going to be doing the, the first two, and they're the same thing, they're two copies. They don't get much room for signatures. The second, okay. second one, there's plenty of room for signatures. Um, this is for chip ceiling on Upper Conway Road, Lower Conway Road, Weber, and a little bit on Haydenville Road. Hopefully, the work I do on Haydenville Road. Do I sign Road, both of these? You need to sign all four of them. Hopefully, the work that we do on Haydenville Road now won't all of us, I think. be requiring any more of our Chapter 90 money. And subsequently, the TIP project, which is on the Hercogs list now, it was on 2021. It's been pushed back to 2022. Hopefully, Wait, the, the building is all in Williamsburg. Correct. That'll be redesigning, re, rebuilding, repaving Haydenville Road from essentially Masterson Road all the way to the town line. Hopefully, that stays on for 2022 and doesn't get pushed back any further. The engineering is still moving forward on that. Um, we are. 
I would expect fairly soon we should be having like a 25% design hearing on that, pretty soon on that. I can give you also an update on the Williamsburg Road Bridge Engineering. Um, that's been um, very challenging in the aspect that um, their initial, the initial design or the estimates for the, the work to be done, they're struggling to keep it within the limits. They are. Um, I guess you could say trying to research some different options and different types of abutments um, and we should I just forwarded an email to Brian this past week we should be hearing some definite progress on that um, so that's still moving forward um, I don't see any reason why it's not gonna squeak by in within budget it's gonna be real tight though Again, the contingency, just like as you know, the, how the contingency you know, m monies work, it's we're tight, but um, it's moving forward. Um, I don't have any other, that's about the only two projects I can update you on. Okay, you guys got any questions? Okay, thanks, Keith. Okay. Um, town hall, anything? Um, site work's going, you got the, oh, I got the curbing in? Yeah, I can update you that with the curbing yeah, that we were responsible for is in and done. <coughs> and we'll have, as soon as I can get the patching paving done around there, we'll have that all done and buttoned up on our, our, our end. What else? Yeah. So the site work's ongoing. I think we're about ready to do a punch list for the second floor. Is that what came across yeah, today? Yeah, right. um, so things are 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 wrapping up. Um, right. Okay. Um, post community agreement for urban grown. How much do we want to get it is? Well, um, I think we. I can just. I can tell you the. the, the, the spirit of how we did the complete streets. So I'll give you the summary. Um, we started off with a couple of um, uh, uh, CHAs, uh, host, oh, sorry, HCAs, host community agreements that we had gotten initially from Montague and then we found the person, the right person at the CCC and we got names of other towns and we were able to look up other host community agreements um, and we uh, have uh, Brian put together uh, based uh, partly on some of those and partly on uh, just reading closely, you know, what can we specify in here, got some other good models. And so we've got a draft for everybody to look at. The draft has been by uh, Jim Savini, who added some uh, 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 requirements, if that's the right word, um, uh, regarding security. Um, there was one last thing just, I think, added today when we, uh, Many towns had uh, asked the growers for funds to funds for education, mm -hmm. and I think that is added at this point. Um, if it's not in there, then it's something we, we absolutely intend to add. We found some host community agreements that actually asked, in addition to the three percent, they asked for, uh, which then the three percent is supposed to be tied to impacts on the community. But we found some host community agreements that actually asked for a per pound on the wholesale payment to the town that they can do whatever they want with. It might be that that's a historical artifact from medical marijuana and that the recreational marijuana law is different from the medical marijuana law. And in, in that particular respect, the legislator, legislature has again, in their wisdom, limited the sources of funding that small towns can use to support their local needs. Okay, so I'll just, if, you're feel, if you're feeling a little heel on the back of your neck, that was your state legislature. Note to self. Yes. Note to self. <laughs> right. So uh, we can try. We we can try adding a clause like that and see if they'll see what they'll do. Uh, we can always ask. We can always ask for something. 
you know, the law does not say they have to do that. I think we should absolutely ask. I'm, I'm wondering what grade levels the education would be directed at. Yeah, so, I, I, so I'm at being not a, a professional in that area. Um, but we've got both an elementary and a high school within spinning distance. Right. I, uh, I, would so agree. I, I would I would think it should address both. Mm -hmm. I, and I think Joyce, and correct me if I'm wrong, but perhaps the, the best way to ask for the funds to be found outside the three percent is the fact that we are a regional school district. And we 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 we're, we want to educate all students mm -hmm. um, but the funds should not that are earmarked for Waitley, because it's a Waitley host agreement, should not necessarily be used to, and again, I'm just spitballing a, 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 a rationale for being outside the 3%, that because we're a regional school district, supervisory union, we want added money so that we can educate students from across our regional district, as opposed to taking the Waitley share and, and educating everybody. That's, that's yeah, just the thought. I, I think a re, since our education is regionally based, that's perfectly sensible. Okay. So, but we have not, as far as I know, we've not handed this over to uh, Urban Grove to ask what they think of it. But no, we have not. And they are chomping at the bit because I've been contacted multiple times, and this is the last piece in their puzzle before they submit their application. So, not that their emergency is <laughs> our emergency. Yeah. But that's what requests has been made. That whatever we can do to expedite this, the better. Okay. And do you think that this would mirror any host agreement that we would also have with the other pending application? I think the retail will. The size of what they're proposing to do in cultivation only, as opposed to retail, is going to be different. I think this is appropriate for what their what their facility is, and a lot of the language is lower plate. Yeah. So, in terms of retail, I think you will see a, we should have a lengthier agreement. Because yeah. I, I suspect there will be more impacts on what we anticipate for this facility. For the, uh, for the this one easy. not mentioned here, you're saying, or this one? This one will have less impacts than right. the proposed right. right. retail okay. establishment. Okay. Um, so, actually, I don't, I don't, I don't see in here, under community impacts, it's a, it does say increase in demand for educational services. Um, at one point, we had talked about putting in, like, underneath charitable donations to ask for an additional donation of, and the number I threw out was 5,000 just because it's already in the previous one, to put something in specifically for funding educational, um, uh, education on drug use and abuse and uh, particularly, um, you know, hazards for younger users. Yeah. Um, that was you know, there's language on in section 10 L, but I think we talked about right exactly we talked that, about moving that up and just having that as uh, I didn't have a chance to do it yet, but moving yeah, because because yeah, because I remember the, the comment was oh, this says develop a plan, but how do we pay for that? So I don't know if it's a separate number there, but and I don't know what a good number is for funding such an education program. But I, since we asked her for 5,000 and other donations, it seemed like it was a number that was nearby. It doesn't seem like it's gonna break the bank. Uh, and it's a start, right? There's gonna be presumably more of these facilities coming in and other towns are gonna be looking to ours as a nearby, as a model. And maybe that's how we get a, a program at the school or get something that gets regular funding. Yeah, I would have thought it would have been higher, but I'll trust your judgment. Uh, no, no, my, yeah, my, my judgment is, is I, I looked at another number and wrote it down. <laughs> that, that's, so there's no judgment to, involved there. So, the so I, or ask the commission. What, what it would cost for a program? I would ask the commission if they have any guidance. Uh, we could do that. They might not have it, but card it's, the guy it's worth who the ask. Will, who will give me the time of day. So What's that? I got somebody who will give me the time of day. Yeah. So They've got an executive you director, and, you know. Yeah. Might be worth it, but Fred, to Fred's point, they may, the, the school may know chapter and verse what the cost would be. Yeah. Who knows? Um, possibly, yeah. yeah. Okay. 
on, on the uh, security plan, is any discussion been on what's what detail is supposed to be in there, or is that going to be up to the chief? And, um, leave it up to the. It, yeah. This host community agreement it, is not a great tool for enforcement. Enforcement. Um, there, there's no mechanism to enforce this. Uh, we could tell the CCC we revoke our host community agreement, but I'm not sure what that does. Um, so it's a great tool in hopefully getting us some revenue. Um, don't tell them. But other than that, I don't force it. So, so we can't, under what, or what? I mean, not, it's not really, not I mean enforcement is it's not renewed after five years, yes, essentially. Yeah, so you have to live with it for five years. You have to live with it for five years. And, and they, they, they have to come. I mean, there, there are things here that you have to come when we call, essentially, right? Um, and we want reporting. You know, uh, you respond immediately and substantively when contacted by representative of the town. What if they don't? Yeah, is, is that in here we can revoke this? Um, there were terms for revoking it. I don't know what the effect of that is. Yeah, and uh, the CCC is doing their best, I'm sure, but I'm not sure they know either. Yeah. Uh, but I, they I, might. But they might. If we brought it to their attention, they might shut them down. Yeah, I, I get to my concern. It can have a security plan, but uh, how is is a breach going to be identified? I mean, is alarms going to go off? Is lights going to flash, or is he waiting for the, the police uh, with a siren to come to the property? Well, I mean, yeah. If that keeps happening every month or whatever, right. the neighborhood's going to be pretty ticked off. Right. They're going to have to satisfy whatever they the have control yeah. commission regulations for security. But it's not, I, I mean, yeah. yeah, you can say you're going to do all that. Or, right. Or, I mean, it's similar to what we were discussing earlier. Saying something is one thing, yeah. but having a written plan so that we yeah. have something to, to, to fall back on and to, and to, re, to reference yeah. when something happens, right. that, that's important. Right. And, and we I should be if, consistent. And I don't know if, the, if the, this is enough language to say we would get that detail. Uh, well, the, the, the chief, chief has I to guess. approve. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, what if the chief doesn't approve? Well, it's, to me it's Can they like, revoke their license? It's more than just responding when an incident occurs, but I guess yeah. you got to, how is the incident identified? Alarms? Camera? I don't know. Whatever well, the CCC regulations require yeah. is what they're going to do. But yeah. let's get that in writing again. If, if we're going to ask for, 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 for some pretty significant specifics right. from the people who were at the meeting earlier. We should ask for those right. same specifics. Let's, let's yeah. be consistent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that'll, those are the marching orders for next draft and iteration? Uh, are you good with that, Trace? I, what are the marching orders? To put in something about education, but yep. maybe not pull a number out of my butt for it. Uh, okay. Maybe I can contact the guy at the CCC I can ask at the school, but asking for something from the school in Doesn't the second week quickly. of June is yeah. um, that would also be pulling a number out of somebody's. Yeah, you know what? Okay. All right, then but, start with the commission then, <laughs> and see what happens. Yeah. And maybe maybe Patty Cavanaugh, she's usually a good numbers person. Okay. She'll know who to ask. Okay, and, and then our if we make those changes, are you okay if we share this with? Is the board okay if we share this with Urban Grown so that they can run it by their attorney? Yeah, but I think we also want the, the specificity in terms of the, the security system written in here. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, and I think it is at this point. Do you think so? You're comfortable with that? Okay, that's fine. They're, they're, requ they're required that they need to provide it. <coughs> that they, the have to they have to submit it to, like, the state law doesn't say you have to submit it to your local police chief. This says right. you've got to submit it to your local police chief, too. Yeah, he's, he's okay. For okay. So we're, we're asking for us things that are a little bit above law, but largely their security system is going to be dictated by what the CCC has has made their rules. Okay. That's, that's my sense of it. All right. So then, yes, I would be comfortable with you sharing with Urban Urban Grown. Okay. So we'll come in. At, we'll act on it next meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Electricity, aggregation, colonial power. Uh, very quickly, a couple things happened. I want to reschedule him. Uh, Mark Capadona called me. He's the Colonial Power representative. And 
he said that their attorney contacted DPU and DPU changed his mind. I'm supposed to talk with the person from DPU and it's in, it's in relation to the warrant article. Language. Changed his mind from what they told you or from what they told Colonial? From what they told me <laughs> about that it's not valid. Um, the, the hearing officer was supposed to call me tomorrow to we'll talk about it, but my sense is that it's the language, they'll accept the language now because they have done it in other Can we get this in writing from the hearing officer? Writing, yes. Because and, I don't want, oh yeah, no, we didn't really mean that. Yeah. <laughs> and That's right. I, so I, I talked with Mark and he, he asked about coming out and I thought he might come out for your next meeting, but I'm thinking- That meeting is getting pretty crowded. Not right? a good idea. And actually the, the meeting on the 27th is going to be largely dominated by the, the licenses. And I think we need to move at, as much as possible um, to the second Wednesday of July. Yeah. The 11th, that would be. Otherwise, we're going to be here forever. Yeah. Right. Then he was going to take. He was going to talk us through the. Uh, he was going to talk us through the, the process, next steps from from their point of view as to what they would provide the town. Um, in terms of when we talked with the the energy committee, had we were operating under the assumption that the warrant article was not going to be valid, so we had talked about possibly doing a special town meeting. Um, and possibly using that as a, as a vehicle for informing people about it because it is an opt-out system that's being set up. Um, but if we just want to, next step is to me talk with Mark, I'm, I'm fine with however you guys want to proceed. That would be my suggestion, but I'd love to hear from, not that we're convening, but the other energy committee meeting member that's uh, in the room. <laughs> um, the energy committee to paraphrase Brian had suggested that if we were to have to go to town meeting to have new language drafted that we would use that opportunity to amplify the opportunity that the town was signing up for and to give people the knowledge that they have to opt out of the program if, if we don't have to go to town meeting I'm going to suggest that we just talk with Mark, and then if we and then we will, as an energy committee, decide. Or what I would suggest to the energy committee when it convenes next, that we will decide at that point when and how we will publicize the Colonial Power Aggregation option and figure out how to how to move forward. Yeah, were it to be adopted, Colonial Power is under op would be under obligation to do substantial um, in information, provide substantial information to and, and outreach to the public, uh, in addition to anything that the town would provide. Okay. I can imagine that uh, an open forum, I can imagine maybe a half hour talk show on FCAT, I mean, many number of things might be of, of value. But one of the things that is asked of the applicants for the proposal is required of anybody who is uh, hired, um, if the town were to agree to that, is uh, sufficient uh, outreach that everyone would understand completely what the proposal is and what the value was uh, and what the options are. Okay. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Can, can we put a, a notice in? Uh, Say the tax bills that get sent to everybody. That we, could, we could do any number of different. I mean, the water department does. Strategies. They got that brochure with the water quality, whatever. But yeah, at might. least the tax bill would go to yeah, every. It goes to everybody's every water goods have. Right. I, I might suggest an article on the way the scoop. And the scoop, right? FCAT scoop right. tax bill. But yeah, it could do a tax bill everybody gets. So. Yeah, and, and on top of what it's Colonial Power will do. Um, but I think we should cross that bridge when we come to it so we know exactly what we're publicizing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, dog kennel? Dog kennel agreement. Our animal control officer is recommending that we re up with the Franklin County Sheriff's um, office to have access to the regional dog kennel because we don't have our own kennel. Um, and this would just be signed if we want to do it by the new chairperson. Okay. 
I'm, I'm thinking that we would rather do that than have our own dog kennel. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we have our own dog office here, though. It's not here right now. <laughs> no, that's a dog. That's the keeper of the pound. Keeper of the pound. Keeper okay. The pound, yeah. Okay. Not to be confused with the fence that are. And the yeah. cattle rest there. Or I think we're just like we're supposed to build a view to town property lines. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, confirmatory deed for town hall. So, it gets a little. It's getting a little late, so this will probably make sense. <laughs> okay. So. We don't have a deed for the town hall. Really? Our research shows that likely, we don't have a, we don't have an opinion on this, but when the town of Waitley was um, um, established as North Hatfield. Well, You're talking of, town hall emeritus, not yes, this building. Okay. Not this town hall. Yeah. Um, from North Hatfield, there was a division of commons and there was certain land that was divided up into different commons. Well, we think that it was, that's when the town first took ownership of the property on which the town hall sits. Um, so there's no deed. Um, why is it important? Because when we accepted the Mass Historic Commission grant for the town hall, it requires a recording of preservation restriction. I'll get to the point in a second. So Mass Historic Commission wants to reference a deed in the preservation restriction. So they've asked that the, that the select board execute confirmatory deed, um, which town council has drafted, which okay. conveys, is this still recorded? Absolutely nothing, um, <laughs> but from the town of Whaley to the town of Whaley, because um, typically you need the party who owns it to convey it, the party doesn't own it. Um, and it's usually two different parties, but this is the first step that town council suggested that we um, take. And then we can get a pretty nice uh, colored paper deed. Yes. We're like making our own deed, basically. We're doing our yes. own deed. Which, <laughs> which may or may not be accepted, which may or may not be accepted by the family county registry of deeds. So this is, at, at, by the way, this recommendation is at $250 an hour. What good deed deserves an hour? What's that? One good yeah. deed deserves another. I'm just waiting for that. Oh, okay. So we will see what that happens. We'll see what happens. It may also require that we'll need a um, subsequent town meeting vote to the deed to the town to, hall property to, to give you guys town. authority. God. Okay. Ex post. All right. It's too late for this. Facto. Fuel contracts. Fuel contracts. I remember getting a note from you about those. Um, Kiris, Kiris feels a little bitter for um, diesel oil. and number two fuel oil. And then in the past, and I discussed this with, with Keith, we went for gasoline, we went um, to the FERCOG to do the group purchasing for the uh, for the gasoline, and the little bidder was uh, Sandry Energy. Okay. So I'll be looking to okay. award those bids. Motion to accept the bids. And there is here Second. somewhere, I promise. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adjourn? Aye. Aye.